absolutely correct in that um, I, I, I made the statement that the only objective truth is that there is a thinking thing. And then I can accept a, a wide variety of things if we're speaking in terms of subjectivity. But when it comes to objectivity, that's as far as it can go. I can't. Uh, it, the Christian God purports to be the source of objective truth, whereas I would say that there is no objective truth outside of there is a thinking thing. But we can have we can have tons of discussion about what is subjectively true, if we if we want to delve into the uh, you know to subjectivity, and we can accept certain axioms. Uh, past there the, that there is a thinking thing which we generally do to have discourse but um, objectivity I, I reject the objectivity of the Christian God I because it extends you, past there is a thinking thing I encourage you to ask Darth why he thinks agnosticism is a contradiction if you ask him this he will begin to flee homie that's not true because if I ask him anything he's going to ask me a question and I answer my question <laughs> If you want, I'll do it when he gets back. You'll see what happens. Is he is he gone for good? Is he coming back to finish this? Or he said he's taking a phone call. I mean, I assume he'll come back. <clears throat> so I don't know if you've heard this, but yeah, Darth has this hilarious view that agnosticism is a contradiction, and he's not able to actually explain why anyone would hold the view. And if you press him on this, he'll just flee. Um, I've tried. He's flat on every question I've asked him, my dude. Did you hear him answer any of my questions? Uh, I He's just came in off. a few. I just came in a few minutes ago, but I wouldn't be surprised if he answered none of your questions. That's kind of. I'd say, hey, can you answer this? And he'd go, sure. After you answer this, and then never answer my question. Let's, let's all go back to general, general chat. Are there any? Uh, are there any sort of uh, apologists or Christians that would like to engage with uh, Isaac on the issue? On why I got <laughs> I'll, I'll be amazed if any of them will try to defend it. It's just a hey, crazy Catherine, claim Darth makes. None of them will defend the view. Foxy <laughs> wants to speak. I'll unmute him. Hi, Foxy. Hey, Foxy. Sound on. <laughs> I think I'm on push to talk here as well. So uh, sorry if it cuts off. So I think uh, the point about the agnostic is um, is that basically, and I'm not Christian, but if you deny the Christian God, and you deny your knowledge of God, right, then you're an atheist to that God. You know, you can't be agnostic about an always truth revealing God so, that bestowed you with sorry, the, in such a way you the, could be wrong about it. The claim is That's... supposed to be that agnosticism is a contradiction. What contradiction is entailed by agnosticism? You can't, like I've just said, you can't hold the position that you're agnostic about something that says that everybody is born with di like direct knowledge of God. Okay, sorry, I you think know. there's some confusion here. Foxy, do you understand what a contradiction is? Yeah, I think you're a troll. I think Darth's probably right, and you guys are trolls. Well, why don't, why don't you, why don't, wait, why don't you, instead of announcing troll, why don't you answer the question, what is a contradiction, right? You're because not you're not listening to my did, answer. Did anyone, I'll, I'll, I'll appeal, I'll appeal to the room. Did anyone hear him answer what a contradiction is? And I'll explain why, I, one second, and I'll explain why I asked the question, right? Because I asked you, I asked you what, I, he, hello, hello, I'm being cut off, not done talking, right? So is this acceptable? I, uh, so I just don't, oh, can, I, can I get a, can I get can I get a mute on the guy who's just cutting me off? Well, so I don't even know what, if this is a, uh, an official debate, right? Everyone one, is going to general One second. So what I had asked, right, is what's the argument that agnosticism is a contradiction? Now, what I heard well, in what response, I what I, sorry, please, I'm not going to, you think, if you think I'm going to answer you when you're cutting me off, you're delusional, okay? Now, what I heard in response was not, what I heard in response was not an articulation of a contradiction. So I asked again, right? Again, I didn't hear a contradiction. So at this point, I have some doubt as to whether Foxy actually understands what a contradiction is, which is why I'm asking the question, right? I just want to ensure that we're on the same page. And then once we're on the same page about in a strict, formal, logical sense, what a contradiction is, then we'll go back to what is the contradiction entailed by agnosticism. So, Foxy, I put the same question to you. What do you think a contradiction is in terms of formal logic? Give a formal definition. I'm not going to re respond to ask yourself because of his behavior. Right. Go, go hide, do Foxy. Like go hide, Foxy. Yeah, I'll I'll I, I will. Oh, sorry, what sorry. Um, is answer the question he asked originally, look, which is how is it problematic 
right, for somebody to say that they're agnostic, right, about a Christian worldview, right? Now, if everybody is born with knowledge of God, which is essentially what the Bible implies, right, then you cannot be agnostic about God because you're born with direct knowledge of God. Now, if you want to sit there and say that I don't know what a contradiction okay, is... Okay, sorry, like we've child, got to talk to the mods for a second here. Have a sorry, sorry, one second, one second. Now, I want to speak to the mods in here because I've dealt with this frustrating mute situation multiple times, okay? So <sighs> let me make this clear. Next time that I, hear, that I get fucking muted in this server, when I'm asking someone a legitimate line of questioning and they're dodging, I'm gone from here, never coming back, okay? Except maybe Foxy to stomp was Primal Edge Hell. Foxy was muted as well. I don't, I don't care that Foxy be muted, right? He can, if, uh, it's nice if they want to mute when I'm trying to ask him a question and he's dodging, he doesn't have to, right? But I'm not one, question, one, one, uh, one, okay sorry, sorry, one second. All I'm saying is if I have to deal with any kind of garbage muting, I'm gonna leave. I'm not gonna sit here and be <laughs> muted. Now, I asked Foxy a question. I asked him a very clear question. What is a contradiction? Now, Foxy is refusing to answer, okay? So until he provides an answer, all I'll do is ask the same question, right? So that is why I'm saying the same thing. Now, Foxy, what is a contradiction? He already left, so it's kind of pointless. So. Right. Uh, no, yeah. this, no, this is what, sorry, just one sec. No, this is what all of these uh, pathetic pre-sup weirdos will do. Now, I don't know if he's one of them or if he's just trying to defend their view. No idea. But if anyone in here wants to actually defend this insane position that Darth holds, that agnosticism is a contradiction, and not cuck out of the debate and flee into the shadows after invoking a term that you're unable to define, I'd love to hear from you. I would like to ask you a question if you hold to agnosticism. Wait, can uh, I get mine I, in real quick? I've been waiting. I've been in line. Yeah, what up, Elder? So uh, I actually, when he what, when what he said, I think he framed before. Like, I don't, I don't agree with it. But can I play devil's advocate for a minute, and maybe we can just resolve it really fast? Yeah, but just make sure that what you're doing is spelling out a contradiction, though. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I think. I think what he meant to say, and I could be wrong, and I'm not saying that I agree with it, but this might be a little bit more clear of a point that he was trying to make, maybe, is the idea that, um, I think that the idea here is that you can't, you can't not know if the, you can't say that you can't know if there's a God, if the only reason you can question him is because God gave you, like, consciousness, like, the capacity to question him. I think that might be what he was trying to get at. So I think that people get frustrated it's by this, but I, I often I often have but... to do the same thing though when I talk to people because online there's a lot of people who invoke words like contradiction or argument or premise or proposition without actually knowing what these things mean and they're just building block level terms and logic. So sure. Elder, not not trying to be rude at all, but I didn't actually hear you spell out a contradiction. Do you actually understand what a contradiction is? Uh, it's it's a it's when you make a point that invalidates your stance, correct? Not really. So I, a contradiction. Maybe I worded this poorly. Yeah, it has a very clear formal definition. So a contradiction is going to be some proposition and negation. That's what we're talking about. So a contradiction is a statement of the form, the sky is blue, and it's not the case that the sky is yeah. blue. God exists. To and deny it's not the truth the by asserting the opposite. Yes. Yeah, to, to deny the truth by asserting the opposite. It's the conjunction of a proposition and its negation. Sure. So, so what conjunction of a proposition and its negation is entailed by agnosticism? No, I don't think there is one. I was just saying I think that that's what he was trying to say. Right. Well, well wait. So just, well. To be, just to be clear, so what he was trying to say was something other than spelling out a contradiction? Oh, wait. Uh, well, Sasha, I... Sasha says that... Uh... I think, yeah, I'm going to unmute her. I think uh, she knows the what the contradiction is, so go ahead. Well, yes. yeah, If may I ask uh, the question? Uh, earlier I, I had asked if I could ask the question. Oh, sure, go ahead. Ask ahead the, uh, person. Yeah, yeah go I ahead, wanted to ahead, ask the uh, person that's defending ag agnosticism. Uh, does, uh, does, ag does agnosticism necessitate God as the primary singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts? Sorry, I don't. What I'm looking for is an argument, not a question. An argument that so you, has so you the don't conclusion. want to answer my question. 
That's correct. You I'm don't looking, want to answer my question. That, that's correct. I'm looking for an argument that has the conclusion that agnosticism is a contradiction. Does anyone in the room have that? Okay, so... Yeah. I mean, not that I accept it, but I know what Darth's argument is. Uh, okay. Sure. So Darth, Darth has a few incoherent arguments, but yeah, if you if you think that you can give an argument to that effect, I'd be interested to hear it. Maybe start by just spelling out what the contradiction is supposed to be. Wait, but just to be clear, it's not that I accept the argument. I'm just saying, you came in saying that Darth won't spell out what the contradiction is, and I think he does spell out what the contradiction is. Elder, your mic is popping off. It's really hard to hear this person talking. Oh, my bad. Give me one minute. Yeah, so it's not that I actually hold the view. I'm just saying that you initially came in saying that Darth says it's a contradiction, but he can't spell out what the contradiction is. I think I heard Well, sometimes, sometimes he somewhat spells out what the contradiction is. There's times where he'll say that the contradiction is, you know that God exists, and it's not the... Or, sorry, you know that God doesn't exist, and it's not the case that you know that God doesn't exist. We've gotten that out of him once before. But he always kind of waffles around. It's not totally clear what the contradiction is. And the one time, which is recorded, you guys can all go hear it, where we got Darth to commit to the notion that that is the contradiction in question, this was Alex Malpass and myself, he delivered an argument of the form, if God exists, then you know it. You don't know it. That's, you know, a, pi a hypotheosi, that's agnosticism right there. You don't know it, therefore God doesn't exist. And then tried to say, okay, well, therefore... There, you don't know God exists, and you know God doesn't exist, right? We've got some kind of problem. But the whole issue there is that that uh, modus tollens argument, if God exists, you know it, you don't know it, therefore God doesn't exist, <laughs> as Malfast pointed out, just refutes Christianity. It doesn't actually get you to agnosticism. What Darth does is he equivocates the conclusion with you know the conclusion, and then tries to derive a con uh, contradiction by uh, taking the equivocated form of the conclusion and the second premise as a conjunction. So it's not that I think well, see, Darth is never, sorry, question. sorry. It's not that I think that Darth is never able to articulate what he thinks the contradiction is. He'll waffle, or, so my position to be clear, is he'll often waffle around about what it's supposed to be. And the odd time that he commits to it and you press him for an argument, and the odd time he manages to actually give one, it turns out being some garbage like that where there's just an equivocation on the conclusion. Yeah. Okay, but that's why I had asked you the question because uh, by your answer, I would be able to know if agnosticism... Sorry, is, I'm not, I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm not interested in being asked questions. I'm interested in whether you have an argument. Now, if you don't I, have an argument, now, sorry, I now, need to now, know the now, position sorry, of agnosticism sorry, hello, to know if there's a sorry, contradiction. So sorry, I don't know your sorry, position sorry, on agnosticism. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, if you're saying that you don't have an argument, good for you. If anyone does, I'd like to hear them. Well, I need to know your understanding. Sorry, of if this person is going to, to if argument. this person is going to continue talking at me without delivering an argument, I'm not going to keep going. Does anyone in here actually have an argument? And Catholic traditionalist, if you have an argument, I'm happy to hear it. But if you don't, well, don't sit I, here trying to ask me questions. Not yeah. interested. Well, I'm interested I, I, in an I argument. I may have an. I may, I may have an have argument an, after I ask a question. Yeah, not interested. Please not interrupt me. I'm not trying, I'm trying interested. Not interested. Mod what I'd like is an argument. Is this person the only now, individual that can now, speak? does anybody actually have an argument? Is, is what I'm moderators, interested. Moderators, can I speak sure, in here? Okay, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna speak. do three more times, and if I'm cut off, I will just leave. Now, does anyone okay, actually so, have an argument? Because I'm happy to hear it out if anyone has an argument for the position. Okay, I'm not interested. Okay, that's one. That's one. That's two. We're about to hit three. About to leave. Now, does anyone actually have an argument for the position or not? Uh, yeah, can I just ask a clarifying question, Isaac? Yeah, if you want to ask a clarifying question, that's fine. Yeah, I, I think he was just trying to ask you to like define agnosticism can you just do that and then um he would need to, to he'd need he'd agnostic. need to he'd need to begin by conceding that he currently does not have an argument and wants to play 20 questions uh sure let's let's hypothetically let's assume that what, what, what do you mean by agnostic specifically well wait wait a second we're not going i see I'm, I'm happy to humor you just because you're you know it's your server or whatever but if he wants to concede that he currently doesn't have an argument, I might be more inclined to answer the question. But I would first ask anyone in the room who actually has an argument if they'd like to deliver it, because I'm interested in hearing the argument sooner than answering questions so some guy can try to generate an argument. I mean, I can tell you.
value. Okay, I would concede that I don't have an argument right now because I don't know your uh, definition of okay. agnosticism. So I okay, would need now, to now to be well, clear. Hold on, I'm not well, finished no, I, speaking. One I'm second, not finished speaking. One second. I am now, not finished if, speaking. Now, no, one not second, one second. I'm not one, finished speaking. Okay, that's one. I would one. need to know your okay, definition. Okay, that's two. Okay, great. Now, if anyone in here does have an argument, Ooh, I'd be happy to hear that. Make an argument. If it, sorry, that's two. We don't, we don't want to hit three here, right? Now, if anyone in here does have an argument, I'd be happy to hear that out. And if no one does, then I'll humor this guy's question and then uh, then deal with him. So does anyone actually have an argument for the position that agnosticism entails a contradiction? What do you mean, like an argument they're willing to defend or just our argument? I mean, I, I don't care. An argument they think works. We know, I mean, <laughs> by Darth's argument, do you just mean the argument that I already talked to you about a second ago? No, I mean, it's like a different argument he also uses. Um, I, I, I guess, I guess, I mean, I guess we can hear out you defending an argument you don't hold. No, I mean, again, I'm saying I'm not willing, I don't, I'm not here to defend it. I'm just not agreeing with what you said initially, which was, that's, I mean, you clarified further, but I thought your initial, like, concern was that Darth is unwilling to offer any argument he often he I mean. often is he often is unwilling to offer any argument so so he he certain certainly won't offer any argument to me right maybe he'll give something to you so what i said was perfect what i said was perfectly clear which is that darth often can't articulate what the contradiction is supposed to be and often in addition to that won't even attempt to give an argument and the only time we managed to get a clear argument out of him, it had an equivocation from the conclusion. That's my position. Do you disagree with anything I just said? Uh, no. Okay. Now, if you want, if you want to deliver whatever Darth's other argument is supposed to be, you're welcome to. If there's anyone who actually seriously holds the view, I'd be more interested in that than someone who's just like memeing the view. Oh, uh, then I guess like the uh, better conversation is gonna be with like Catholic traditionalists. He was, you know, more willing well, to... he's he doesn't actually have an argument currently. He wants so this is the order, right? But, the, or, but the you order, said that if I didn't have the order, argument, the order, the order, the order is someone who actually has an argument for the view and believes it, then someone who has an argument for the view and doesn't believe it, and then someone who thinks they can generate an argument if they ask some questions. So does the first well, you question said that is, does, you would go ahead and entertain my So the first question the first question is does anyone actually hold the view and have an argument for it? Okay. See getting, nobody getting has quick, one. So getting, now let's get getting, back to me and go ahead. No, you are second, you're third on the list. Now the second is someone who's just holding the who's wants to run an argument they don't actually hold, but actually has an argument, right? Who doesn't just want to play twenty questions, and then we can get around to you. So, no. Sasha, what's um what's what's the other one that you wanted to mention? Uh so Darf just says that agnostics claim to make no statement about ultimate reality, but that itself statement about ultimate reality i mean i think that is a contradiction right you're saying like i make no statement about ultimate reality like i don't know it's some sort of like key. what's what are what are the so i understand it would be a contradiction to say that i make a statement about ultimate reality and it's not the case that i make a statement about ultimate reality but what are like the premises and conclusion of the argument well i mean you just i think he's just saying that the agnostic's position is that, but that itself, it, that, posi that position is, I make no statement about ultimate reality, but that, itself, but that itself is a statement about ultimate reality. Wait, but I'm looking, sorry, just to be clear, is there actually an argument with premises and a conclusion, or is this just like an assertion? Well, I mean, the argument would just be, the agnostic position. Is I'm just going to write it out one sec. Okay, premise one. The agnostic position, or sorry, the agnostic position is that they make no statement about ultimate reality, right? And P2 is something like, I make no statement about ultimate reality, it's a statement about ultimate reality. And then, like, you get the, you know, contradiction that, I mean, it's just saying that 
the agnostic oh. sorry i'm i've switched over to typing on dvorak now so i'm i type at like one kilometer per hour the agnostic position is that they make no statement about ultimate reality and then what's the second premise um i make no statement about ultimate reality it's a statement about ultimate reality okay um so if we want to make it valid we'd probably want to do something like um if um Okay, so the let's see. The agnostic position is that they make no statement about ultimate reality. Um, yeah. So what do you want to say? Like this? Uh, I I mean I'm not sure how you'd want to formalize it. Like uh, I'll, I mean okay, we'll try to just get to the conclusion that maybe we can help reach a valid form. So they make a statement about ultimate reality is what you initially said for the second premise. Yeah. And then what's no, the conclusion? No, I'm not that but I mean I I think you see where it's going, right? And then what's the, what's the, well, no, it's, I think that oftentimes there's like just a garbage inference that's being masked. So that's why I'm asking it to be clarified. Um, let's see. Um, let me think how it would be like best form so that it's like, it's definitely valid. Um, I'll just look in the chat for a second. Because the conclusion has to be that they're contradicting themselves. Posted in general. Uh, yeah, that's what I have so far. Oh, I posted it in debate. Sorry, but um, yeah. So, if you if it sounds like you also are in the position of although you said you had an argument, it's kind of like a loose, like informal notion. So, if you want to if you want to formalize it and then come back, I'm happy to hear it, or just like get it to you know at least like relatively clear premises and conclusion, then I'm happy to uh, to you know help finish the formalization and then reply to it. Um, well, you do that. I'll talk to this Catholic guy, unless you think you can do that really quickly. Ah, uh, no, that's fine. Fine, 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 fine. Talk to the other guy. I did it. Okay, Catholic guy. So, what do you want to ask? Catholic, are you there? Okay, and if anyone else has an argument for this uh, insane position Darth holds, I'm happy to uh, happy to hear it. Uh, does anyone uh, want to talk to uh, Isaac directly? Uh, Gunslinger wants to talk to uh, Isaac. Let me yeah, understand. sure. Go ahead, Gunslinger. Hey, what's up, buddy? Not much, just chilling. How so, about you? Doing, doing pretty well. You know, uh, enjoying being at home with coronavirus. But um, I just had a quick question for you. So, you know, I've spoken to Darth a multitude of times and heard his different YouTube channels and things like that. And I think that there's, at the base value of the majority of his arguments, a lack of understanding of the law of excluded middle, where he conflates different things that are not oppositional in nature towards each other. So, for example, um, you know, the shifting of burden of proof of, you know, if you're saying as an atheist or agnostic, I, I disbelieve that you're inherently saying that you're rejecting the proposition and then the burden of proof is on you, or you're saying that you know that God doesn't exist. And I think what mm -hmm. he's doing there, and correct me if I'm wrong, is conflating knowledge with belief and also conflating different propositions of, you know, so that you either know or you don't know, God exists or he doesn't exist, you either believe or you don't believe, but he conflates those together in order to shift the burden of proof. Would you agree yeah, with that? Or? I, I, I think that generally speaking, I agree with, I, I, don't, I wouldn't bring knowledge into it, but I think that Darth is um, notorious for equivocating between... Um, believing a proposition and not believing it and believing a proposition and thinking it's false right as if and he, yeah. he uses ambiguous language like affirm or deny where it's not clear right like if you watch my last second last conversation with him last one he just fled but if you watch my second last conversation with him which is on the internet just go it's something like if you look up like ask yourself um 
you know, banned by Darth Dawkins for making sure he's not begging the question. It's It's got a title, something like that. But basically, it was the same thing, right? Asking what the argument is supposed to be that agnosticism is a contradiction. And well, he uh, delivered the argument. He made the statement that you either affirm or deny that God exists, right? And I had to stop him there. And I had to say, well, wait for a second, Darth, because that language is ambiguous. So there's two ways we can cash it out. And this connects exactly to what you're saying about him being unclear about, like, accepting versus not accepting versus actually, like, rejecting, like, thinking a proposition is false. So I asked, okay, when you say you either affirm or deny God, which of the following does that mean? Does that mean that you either take the proposition God exists to be true or you take it to be false? Because if that's what you mean, then you're just begging the question, right? That's the thing that we're looking for an argument for, that you do one or the other of those things, right? That's that what that's what it would be for agnosticism to not be possible, right? So if in the argument, which of course with Darth is always some informal ramble, but if in the argument for agnosticism being a contradiction, we're delivered the proposition that <laughs> it's impossible to be agnostic, <laughs> then that's just question begging, right? But if on the other hand, he means something like you either take the proposition to be true or you don't take it to be true, then that's fine, but it's not clear how he's going to get to agnosticism being a contradiction from there. So yeah, there's a, do you appreciate the sort of like loose language that could equally be interpreted to mean that you think P is true or you think P is false, or you think P is true or you don't think P is true? Yeah, that's exactly what I was, what I was talking about. And the yeah. appeal is to this law of excluded middle. And I've, I firmly hold the stance that he doesn't understand what the law of excluded middle actually means or doesn't know how to apply it or is purposefully applying it incorrectly. Um, the majority of the talks I had with him in the past pretty much stalled right at the law of excluded middle as he tried to shift the burden of proof and realized well, yeah. that I wasn't going to allow it to go past that point. So, because, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, a funny one with the law of excluded middle, right? So the law of excluded middle is that either P or not P, right? There's not, there's yep. not some middle position. So, and, and there's, of course, people who question the LEM, but, like, we'll just, just set that aside because, you know, that's all stuff Darth would have no idea how to deal with. Um, now, there's a funny thing that he'll do, and I think you'll probably, probably have seen this also, where he'll say... It's just the law of the excluded middle. Either you believe God exists or you don't believe God exists. But there's a confusion there, right? Because you could apply the law of the excluded middle to the proposition that God exists, right? You could say either it's the case that he exists or the case that he doesn't exist. But you can't, you could, and you could apply it to either the statement that you believe he exists or you believe he doesn't exist. Well, exactly. But That's those, but those two statements yeah. aren't each other's negation, right? This is exactly. this is subtle, yeah. but people don't notice this. So, well, that, that's that's the, where I've kind of stalled with him because um, it's it's a conflation, right? He's taking God either exists or doesn't exist. That's true, but I don't know whether God given exists certain or assumptions, exist. given, exactly, yeah, it, given yeah, exactly. So. I, however, I don't know. I don't have knowledge of whether or not God exists or doesn't exist. I do disbelieve that he exists because I have no evidence, well, sufficient evidence to support the claim. But he conflates the given assumption that it's either existence or non-existence and then conflates that with knowledge of existence. So the way I think we're getting at the same thing, but the way yes, the way yeah. I would put it is that he can like say we just accept the LEM, right? So we can say either God exists or God doesn't exist. That's just, you know, instance of the LEM. It's P or it's yep. not P. There's not another option. And he could apply that to the proposition you believe God exists, right? Either it's the case you believe God exists or it's not the case you believe God exists. He could also apply it to the proposition uh, you don't be you believe God doesn't exist, right? Either it's the case that you believe God doesn't exist or it's not the case that you... Uh, so, or it's not the case that you believe God doesn't exist. But the problem that he's getting into is he's taking it as if it's a legitimate instance of the LEM to say yep. that either you believe God exists or you believe God doesn't exist when those two statements aren't each other's negation, right? Exactly. It could yep. be the case that you don't believe he exists, right? That's the negation of you believe he exists. And <laughs> you don't believe that he doesn't exist, right? That's the negation of you believe he doesn't exist, but that just leaves you with you don't believe he exists and you don't believe he doesn't exist, right? You just have no no opinion one way or the other. You just don't have a belief about it. 
So and it would I be, feel like that's where yeah. the majority of things just break down, where like the conversations fall apart because it, it's just such a dishonest attempt at shifting this burden of proof because when it really comes down to it, there just, there just isn't a good argument, right? There well, I'm not sure if it's dishonest or if he's legitimately confused, but like, I just, yeah. it's, I feel like people have a hard time tracking that because they, they go, either you believe it's true or you believe it's false, but that's not the case, okay? The negation of you believe P is true is it's not the case that you believe P is true. Exactly. The negation of you believe P is false is it's not the case that you believe P is false, right? But it's not the case that the negation of you believe P is true is you believe P is false. And it's easy to see that if you just do a kind of like linguistic analysis, right? Like you can arrive at the negation of a proposition by putting it's not the case that in front of the proposition. If you put it's not the case that in front of the proposition you believe God exists, that yields the proposition it's not the case that you believe God exists, right? It doesn't yield the proposition that you believe God doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, part of me... I guess the reason why I assume that it's dishonesty is just because I can't imagine that an individual could have so many conversations about this stuff. And I feel like this is a very, as you said, it can be difficult to track, but I feel like it's a very basic point, right? If you're getting into these uh, epistemological types of questions, I, I feel like being able to understand this would be very important. Well, yeah, it shouldn't. And the, the weird thing with Darth is Darth will actually acknowledge that he, he he's not confused about that it is possible in most instances to have uh so it's it's actually it's really weird that he treats that like a case of the lem you believe god exists or you believe god doesn't exist because he understands that that's not an instance of the lem when you're talking about something quote not ultimate right he understands that you could just be agnostic about the existence of like the higgs boson right like he he would he would agree that you could not believe it exists and not believe it doesn't exist, right? And that's the that's the position presumably a lot of people were in, right? Um, before before we had done some some testing or whatever physicists did with that. So yeah. he he doesn't. It's not that he actually has this like general lack of understanding of agnosticism. He he understands that and general lack of understanding of the LEM. He seems to be able to apply it correctly to belief propositions in other instances, but. With this case, he doesn't. But it's it's weird because he shouldn't he shouldn't treat the believe God exists or believe God doesn't exist case like it's an LEM instance, right? Because it's not like he if he understands those other cases, he should understand it's not in virtue of the logical form that it's going to be a, a instance of the LEM, right? If he thinks that if he thinks that it's somehow logically impossible to be agnostic or something like this, like. He can give some kind of argument for that, but he shouldn't. It's weird that he would try to invoke the LEM when he understands that just in virtue of that form, you don't get an LEM violation if you apply it to any other beliefs. Do you follow what I'm saying there? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. I totally understand where you're going with there. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, I think that it's a disconnect with when it gets applied to his religious belief, because I mean, the majority of his premises that follow that point depend upon these gotcha moments of you now have the burden of proof so you know he stalls out like the engine starts to putter once it doesn't get past that point of i've now forced you to prove to me that god doesn't exist and then it, you, you can't prove the negation of an unfalsifiable proposition so it just becomes a a you know argument of futility and it, it's just a silly thing to do it would be like me sitting here and saying um, you either believe Flibbergerber exists or you do not believe Flibbergerber exists. You you disbelieve actively. You reject Flibbergerber. And then I'd be like, well, what's a Flibbergerber? And it's like someone can't explain that. And then it just stalls out and they go, well, you can't say it's not true or you can't prove that it's not true. And it's like, well, quite frankly, I don't even know what it is. So um, you haven't explained it sufficiently and, and yet you're asking me to try and negate this thing and it's just simply not the way that philosophy or logic works and it's just to me it's very silly Gun gunslinger <laughs> can i can i just like i'm not necessarily uh i'm just i'm gonna try to just steel man darth because you guys are just kind of talking about why he's wrong i get that but i'm wondering if i can just based on my interactions and trying to understand what his point is here i just want to try to throw a couple of these arguments at you and just see what your reaction would be this is just as best as i understand his point I suppose that the version of the argument in like kind of sense 
Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just so... looking at that, Sasha. Um, so we can just read through it. So the agnostic position affirms the proposition. I make no statement about ultimate reality. So just stopping at P1, is that actually the case? Affirms the pro. Does that mean when you, it's weird to talk about a position affirming something, but is that to say that if one's an agnostic, then they would say that they, they have to have a belief that they make no statement about ultimate reality? Well, the other thing is the term ultimate reality. Sorry, wait, can I, well. I, I just, let, let me talk to Sasha for a sec, because Sasha was right. the one who, who set that up. Is that, does, so just to just re-ask the same thing, is this saying that an agnostic actually um, affirms that they make no statement about ultimate reality? Yeah, I think that's, that's the idea. Yeah, so I think like without even looking at the form and if it's valid and stuff, which it looks like it is, it looks like it's just a big kind of like hypothetical syllogism with some other stuff in there. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just already just garbage. It's like an agnostic doesn't have to have a belief like that. Yeah. I mean, I uh, can I, can I, can I piggyback off of this? I think I yeah, think well, my I just, before, before similar. you do, I, I, I'm happy to hear from you, but I just, Sasha took all the time to write that up. So, you know, I just want her to have a chance to say whatever it is she wants to say about it. So was, was that all? Because if there's if there's some further steel man or something i'm happy to hear it but like we don't even need to look at the rest the first premise is just false um i mean i'm not kind of sure what what the fuck ultimate reality is but like uh, <laughs> I, I think i think that's the idea of the argument right because the agnostic doesn't even have to affirm they're an agnostic right like we kind of got into this last time the agnostic doesn't and i know the the you know, presuppers like hate that. It's like, oh, they're like hiding their position. But I just ask you to consider the case of someone who's just never thought about the question, right? It's like they don't know that they're an agnostic. They don't they don't have a belief, like a second order belief about their absence of belief. Would it be a second order belief? It's not about a belief, but about the absence of belief. Okay, that's something I'll think about for later. But the point is they don't have to have a belief that they have no belief about p they could just not have a belief about p right it's so there's like there's this weird equivocation that ha shows up in a lot of these precept arguments where we equivocate between lacking a belief that p is true and lacking a belief that p is false and having a belief that you lack a belief that p is true and that you lack a belief that p is false now i still don't even think that the latter that like kind of second order agnosticism or whatever where you're you are aware of your agnosticism you have a belief about your agnosticism i don't even think that that entails a contradiction but um there's of course just my point is just that that equivocation between being agnostic versus having a belief about being agnostic shows up in a lot of these pre-sub arguments do you disagree with any of that sasha no i think i think that's right i mean okay. i guess when you have a conversation with someone like discord uh, or say when you have a conversation with someone on discord I guess you could assume that they have some idea about the type of stuff, right? Like they thought about it. Um, so there might be like a difference between like an agnostic who has thought about it and not thought about it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, I would, I would of course accept that there's a, like, the, I mean, that's a re repetition of what I said. Like, I, I agree that there's a, dis like, my whole point is that there's a, dis there's an equivocation, which means that there's two distinct things that are being talked about, right? So the one right. is being agnostic. And the other is having a belief that you're agnostic. And I'm not convinced that either entail a contradiction. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, good faith. Did you, unless, I assume you're done, Sasha. It sounded like you were done there. No, yeah, I am. Uh, good faith. Did you have some yeah. thing to run? Yeah. I'm just going to throw two arguments at you. I think they're pretty similar to what he just said. Uh, this is just as best as I understand Darth's argument. Um, premise one there is no neutral ground or null hypothesis concerning ontology or ultimate reality. Uh, premise, premise two, agnosticism is arrived at by first making a decision about ontology or ultimate reality, then being open to evidence. Therefore, agnosticism is not a neutral position about ontology or ultimate reality. Okay, so notice that the conclusion isn't a contradiction, right? So the whole idea is supposed to be that agnosticism is a contradiction. That's what you need to build to. Uh, it's my understanding that, I mean, maybe maybe Darth has said that, and that's what is the rub for you, but it's my understanding that that is more what he's trying to say, is that it's this, that he finds agnosticism to be this this neutral position, 
and that it technically isn't that that not so much that it's a contradiction uh, is that a distinction that is salient to you or no it's a of course it's a huge distinction so i take his position to be that agnosticism is impossible right and i take impossible to mean logically impossible um which just means there's going to be a contradiction there now i've heard him say it's impossible on many occasions so if he's backed off of that then fair enough right but that's that's the argument that i'm dealing with so some yeah, some is, argument it, that's it, trying to conclude that there's some other problem with agnosticism that's like you know i might disagree with that too but that's different than what we're looking for from darth right okay well that 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 is my understanding of his argument he, i mean he may have said contradiction and maybe that is not defensible but that's my understanding of his argument also i mean said another way you could say like uh, this is getting into talking about agnosticism itself. You could say premise one, any statement about what agnosticism entails is a position about ultimate reality. I make no statement about ultimate reality. Therefore, I'm not making any statement about agnosticism. Again, I don't see how the... Con so, like, the conclusion has to be that there's a contradiction. And I noticed this Beethoven person in chat seems to seems to love talking shit, but never comes on mic. Why don't you just come on mic and make your argument? What is it that you want to say? Well, I'm willing to go on mic, but you don't want to speak to me. Who's that? Well, when it, when it uh, happened, we to go Beethoven. Oh, I, I already addressed you earlier, actually, in the room. No, you didn't you. address my question. Uh, no, I think would, I think I think we can put it to the whole room that I very clearly, once I finished with Sasha and got around to you, asked repeatedly if you'd like to engage. Oh, you weren't you there. Weren't there. Yeah, you weren't there. <laughs> so, yeah. But if you want to you play, well, I'm here now. I'm yeah, here go, now. Do you want to hear my question? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, so in your form of agnosticism, because uh, I've spoken to many agnostics and atheists, and they all seem to have different definitions. So, in your form of agnosticism. Do you necessitate God as the primary singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts? Do I what? Say that again? In your form of agnosticism, do you adhere, do you believe, do you necessitate God as the primary singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts of what you perceive to be reality and existence itself. You're asking if I have a belief that God sustains facts and reality or something like that? Again, in your form of agnosticism, your yes. understanding, mm -hmm. do you, is it, does it necessitate God? as the primary you, sorry sorry one second your language your language is changing around a bit the... i heard i heard you ask about my beliefs right agnosticism is supposed to be about beliefs like you're asking if i have a belief about something right yeah so and, do you believe what is the yeah, yeah that's fine do you believe the, okay, in yeah. your form of agnosticism mm -hmm. does it necessitate god as the primary singular cause that Sorry, actualizes you, you keep and going back and forth between facts. believe and necessitate it's really weird are you asking if i have the belief that agnosticism necessitates god as the like sustainer of facts is that it or are you asking if i believe that god is the sustainer of facts yeah i'm saying the exact same question over and over again um, well, you'll again have to be i'll more repeat clear. it for the I'll, I'll repeat it for the fifth time good just try to be In more clear and i'm sure of you'll get agnosticism an answer. In your form of agnosticism, do you hold the belief mm -hmm. that it is necessary, that mm -hmm. it necessitates God as the primary singular cause that actualizes, in other words, brings forth and sustains all facts in your okay. understanding of what you perceive to be reality and existence itself? Okay, it's a mouthful. So the question is, do I believe that it whatever it means what's it supposed to refer to agnosticism your understanding of agnosticism okay so do i believe that agnosticism necessitates that god sustains and actualizes all facts I, I mean, uh, how many how many times did all of you hear me repeat the same question? It must I, be like I, I, I heard I heard you I heard you give quite a mouthful. If you want to write it down so I can see it all, that would be great. 
No, I'm right. not going to write it down. I think I've repeated it seven times. I think well, you, you see, know what the question is. going to answer it or you're not. You seem unwilling to let me get a clear handle on the question. So I think I've got the first part, which is, do I believe that agnosticism necessitates that God sustains and actualizes all facts? Is that the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have that belief. Uh, Isaac okay, so therein that. lies the contradiction. So if you <laughs> do not have that belief, if you do not believe that uh, it, it uh, necessitates that God is the primary singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts, then that means that uh, your understanding is that it does not necessitate that God is the primary singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts. Therein lies the contradiction. Wait, what's the contradiction? So you're going to get frustrated if I just ask you to be clear, right? And presumably that's because if we get clear, there yeah, might not I've, actually I've been be very a contradiction. Clear. I've been very so clear. So just, just to be clear, a contradiction is some proposition and its negation in a conjunction. What proposition do you think that is? Yeah, so here's the thing. You're going ahead and you're can, can I get someone to write this down sorry because because he's not going to want to repeat it can okay, someone just look, write it down okay, so I can look, look at it after if that I'm going to really get good. interrupted then our discussion is over with uh you're you're dodging and everybody can see that you're dodging I'm right here the language that you're using Catholic traditionalists is, is very very confusing and you're you're combining belief with no it's not confusing at all I'm 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 happy to hear I'm happy to hear him out. I'm just all the yeah. only reason I cut him off was just because what I sense is happening is he keeps giving me these big mouthfuls, and when I go okay, that's a lot to parse. I need to like see that written out or think about that or something. He gets frustrated, right? So I said maybe someone can just scribe it as he or okay, so as he writes it, so Catholic I can just have it to you, look can at. You just, can you just uh, repeat it? Uh, do you believe that I'm God not, is I'm necessary? not going to repeat. I'm not going to repeat well, it again. Well, I've repeated what, so it about eight, seven or eight times already. Well, 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 he no, knows what the no, question no, you, is. You got, he's already wait, answered the question. You, yeah, you got an answer to Right. So then after the question. Right. He's already answered oh the question. So he said okay. in his answer, he does not, be, he does not believe that uh, it is necessary that God is the primary singular cause that actualizes right. and sustains all facts. Correct. So therefore... Because he does not hold that he does he does uh, in his agnosticism it is not a necessity that God is the primary singular cause that actualizes sustains all facts. So uh, if that's the case, okay, then by that very definition of agnosticism, he is essentially an atheist. Here, so this He's is what I'm holding gonna... the position. He's holding the position of atheist. He cannot claim to be in the center he cannot be claimed to be neutral okay one second so i'm gonna i'm gonna help this conversation along by just like simplifying some of the language by just giving it propositional variables okay so let's just write this out uh it was do i believe that agnosticism agnosticism necessitates n-e-c-e-s-s-i-t-a-t-e-s -E necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts. That's the proposition, right? Agnosticism necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts. You're asking me if that's something I believe? Yeah, if you believe okay. that uh, right. it's a necessity that God so, is, is the primary uh, singular cause that actualizes and sustains all facts. And you've already given okay. me your answer. You right. said no. That's right. But okay, so we're just, just to, to not have that big mouthful, I'm just putting this in debate. We're going to call that P, okay? So I don't believe P. So now there's some contradiction that's supposed to be entailed by that, which is a statement of the form P and not P. What proposition is it that shows up in that contradiction? Right. So uh, there's uh, which one is P, the one that uh, does not necessitate? I put it in debate if you want to refer to it, but okay. I, I well, use fine. We'll the say not, the not. We'll say the not P is the one that does not necessitate. That's God. sure. Right. Okay. So the not P well, is the position you hold. The P would be the no, uh, position that uh, no, necessity that, that God is the primary. Okay, okay wait. That, so that there's slight error. So you're right about what we labeled P. That's right. But the fact that I don't believe P doesn't mean that I believe not P. Uh, yes, it does. Yes, absolutely. What? Well, wait, it's either this or that. 
and you've you've decided on one of them. You have wait, not decided on the other. You reject the Sorry. Other. Okay, wait. So, there, there's a confusion that you're trying to apply the law of the excluded middle, right? This is what we're talking about. I can walk you through the error here. So we could say with respect to the proposition, which I wish there was somewhere we could look at this all in text without it scrolling so fast. Is there a channel we can look at together here, Catholic traditionalist? Um, that's not scrolling at like 50 kilometers per hour. Maybe there's not. Uh, um, well, I'm not. I'm not looking at anything, uh, any text. I'm okay. Well, uh, that's that's that's, already, that's fine. You, no, no, no. I, I let me already... let me complete my point. Hey, come on. I, I didn't even get to make a point. I just tried to get a okay, text channel ahead. where we could talk a bit easier. Okay. So I'm putting it in debate, right? So this is the proposition: agnosticism necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts. Now, what I said is that I don't believe that, and you're saying that that somehow entails that I believe this proposition is false, and you're trying to apply the LEM to get to that, right? Uh, I don't know all these technical terms. Law, sorry, using. law of excluded Look, I, middle. I don't read all these philosophy books. I listen to all these uh, talkers. That, that's uh, so fine. I'm not. I'm not. Is... I'm not trying to talk over your yeah. head. Let's just get clear about the terms, though. Just, just to be clear, when you say it's either this or it's that, I assume you mean like either this thing is true or its negation is true, right? It's neg I hope negation yeah, isn't and, a confusing you... term. Right, and so you're holding to one position. You're not holding to the other. Okay, so now I really hope that, like, you sound like you might, like, fucking just get frustrated and leave, but there's really something to understand here that'll be useful for you, okay? This proposition here, if you, so the LEM, that's just this idea that either a proposition or its negation is true. So if we say the sky is blue, either that's true, or the proposition, it's not the case that the sky is blue is true. If I say, like, Catholic traditionalist is winning this debate right now. Yeah, I, I already that... know that. I already know that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, yep. so yeah, that, I'm just, so I'm just going to refer to that property as LEM and we'll just take it for granted. Law of excluded middle. Okay. There are, there are people who challenge it, but I'm not going to challenge it. Okay. So if you apply the LEM to this statement, right, agnosticism necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts, then we can say either it's the case that that proposition is true or that proposition is false, but my belief about the proposition is a different thing. So if we go to another proposition, which I'm now going to put in chat, okay? Um, oops, can you still hear me? Did I just turn my push talk off? One second, I have to see. okay, no, I'm still coming No, through. I hear you. Okay, now, so we're gonna take that same proposition, okay? And, but, and we're gonna call this, we're gonna call it Q now, okay? Just so we don't get confused. And it's going to be the exact same thing, except we're going to put Isaac believes in front of it. Okay, Isaac, B E L I E V E S. Sorry, I'm typing so slow. I'm trying to get used to this fucking Dvorak. Um, okay, so here's Q. Okay, so Isaac believes agnosticism necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts. Now this is a separate proposition than P, right? So I'm going to put P beside it. So if you apply the LEM to P, you can say either it's the case or it's not the case that agnosticism necessitates that God actualizes and sustains all facts. And if you apply the LEM to Q, you can say either Isaac believes P or Isaac doesn't believe P. But what you're not able to do via an application of the LEM is somehow get to if I don't believe P, then I believe not P. Right, you you believe not P. You don't. Right, correct. You don't. No, you've already no. admitted that God does. It, it is not a necessity for God uh, to be the primary singular cause that actually. No, I've I've, no I've said. You've already so, admitted you don't believe. It. Not quite. Not quite. There is a subtle distinction there. So it's not the case that I do believe it. Right. So just let's just take a proposition in the abstract. Okay. If someone says they believe someone's okay. So there's P. All right. Let's just talk about P. If someone right. says, I don't believe right. P is true, do you think that that means that they believe P is false? Right. So you said you. it's not that you do believe it. That's because you don't believe it. You already admitted you don't believe it. Well, right. But don't equivocate between don't believe it and believe it's false. That's the problem, right? So it's correct that I don't believe it, but it's not correct that if I don't believe it, that means that I have this other belief that it's false, right? I could not have a belief that it's true and not have a belief that it's false. Well, of course you believe it's false. You you reject it uh, no, because no, you that's... said that it is not. It does. God is not necessary as the primary singular cause that actualizes. N not quite. Things all facts. So you therefore, just did it you're again. rejecting that. You're rejecting it. 
no, that you, notion that no, he is. no, you just did it again. But I don't, I don't even know that you're being malicious. I think you might just not be following this little detail. So, it's when I say I don't believe P, it doesn't follow that I believe not P. Uh, let me give you another okay, example no, outside of religion, because you'll be able no, to appreciate I'm, I'm it. I'm not going to get into all that stuff with you. Look, that, well, that's well, the contradiction right there. Wait, because the well, thing is, one, you're trying one, to hold a neutral wait, position, can, can and I, you can't hold a neutral position. One, one and that's second. what Dorth always points one, out with agnostics. One, one, one second. Let's you say can't it, claim to be neutral. You know, okay, let's just take the Higgs boson, okay? you. This is like this like particle or whatever. I don't care about thing. any Higgs boson. Look, what? I've been no, 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 the contradiction, so my conversation with you is over. One sec, dude. Just one sec. Well, I'm still going to ask my question you don't have to answer it okay now i'm not going to try to run some like physics shit on you i don't know about physics it's just an example okay it's like there was some particle or something like that and physicists like hypothesize that it exists based on their math or whatever and we did some tests and we found out it does exist that's i think the story but this is the important point okay before we had done the tests do you think that everyone either believes that it exists or believes that it doesn't exist? Don't you think that there were people yeah, who just like, didn't I, have a belief that it exists or doesn't exist? They just didn't know? Yeah, so they would say that they didn't know, but that's not the answer you gave with regards to the question I posed to you. You rejected what? it out of hand that uh, it is a net necessity that God is the primary cause that actualizes the sustains all facts. By, if by rejected so you, you, out of hand... You made a, you made a positive you made a positive claim a truth claim with regards to the question that i posed to you what so I, now you're trying to backpedal because you know there's that you're no back right there, there's no backpedaling and i'm sure it's rec if anyone yeah. has the recording we so, can we can but, play it but so it's impossible for you to hold a neutral position right now what you what, hold is the position of wait, the atheists wait one one second one so, second wait just so with, if you want with, to continue what, the conversation oh, come on. just continue with, with Dorothy. Uh, or you could what? continue it with Jonathan. Jonathan's pretty good at debating Wait, you. But, atheists but well. why why do you why do you have to when I've uh, there's a pretty important point here and I don't think you you're... asked for the contradiction. I gave you the contradiction. I don't I don't I don't accept the contradiction, right? I well, think that you're I think I that you're it and I believe okay. it's a true contradiction and I <laughs> well, care less if you don't I, I don't I don't think you believe it's a true contradiction. I think you believe that I well, believe I in a contradiction. Yeah, well, I do. You don't yeah, actually do. think a contradiction is true. You're the you one invoking the LEM. You don't hold a neutral position, even <laughs> though you claim you do, so it's a no, contradiction. You, you think that I have a belief that's contradictory. You don't actually think well, there is a true anyway, contradiction. It was, but look, it was nice uh, pointing out well, the contradiction. Wait, wait, so, uh, wait a second, you though. Have... But you, you haven't gotten out of this critique, <laughs> So you have a though. good day. Wait, but you hey, haven't yeah. gotten... You haven't gotten... <laughs> so... Did anyone track the issue with what that guy did right there? So he kind of he kind of ran away at the end. Oh, Beethoven, if you think I got wrecked, why don't you come on BC, right? Because there's a very, very simple thing that he wasn't following there, and he didn't seem to want to have it explained to him. But the whole Can I issue... Can question about what he once, was saying? Uh, yeah, once I, once I finish, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people could tell. Uh, Beethoven's still waiting for you to hop on BC. You're talking a lot of shit, but you don't seem to be willing to defend. Um, so the whole thing he was doing there right, is he seemed to somehow think that when I say I don't believe P, right, that that means I believe not P, right, and that's not the case, and I tried to show him with the example of the Higgs boson, right, so before we actually discovered the thing, of course, people didn't just either believe it exists or not believe it, or sorry, believe it doesn't exist, right, there's people who just didn't have a belief, they didn't know if it exists or not, right, and you could have that exact same kind of position with respect to God. So, yeah, the problem with the kind of argument he was just running is that he seems to think that not believing P entails believing not P, which is just simply not true, right? Uh, yeah, who wanted to ask a question? Uh, I, I did. Well, who was the first American one? American wants to go after, just, just, to, just to interject. Uh, American I, I want to I wanna hear from Beethoven, is who I want to hear from. <laughs> Right, so this, this was... person makes all sorts of makes all sorts of claims, but doesn't seem to want to defend any of them. Right? Why don't I mean, you come on, Mike like Beethoven? To, uh, he just likes to be spoken about, just to be acknowledged that he exists, I guess, in chat or something. But, um, so. Oh well, yeah, he just so do, he just seems feel... unwilling to defend. But yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> do you feel uncomfortable with? Like, for me, I, I'm very comfortable saying I do not believe in the existence of God or gods. Would you agree with that statement or no? Yeah, right. But that's not, do you understand that's not the same as the statement, yes. I believe yes. they don't exist, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So it was the exact same example we were talking about. 
Which is kind of ironic, but the same thing we were talking about a little while ago about Darth, and then he came in and did the same thing. Well, now, there, there are certain gods that I believe don't exist, though. Like, generally speaking, I'd call myself an agnostic, but there are some gods I'm an atheist about. Like, Darth's god, for example, since Darth has actually provided an argument that refutes the existence of his own god, which is that if God exists, you know it. You don't know it, therefore God doesn't exist. I actually think Darth's God is false, or the proposition God, Dar God's, <laughs> Darth's God exists is false. But generally speaking, I'd call myself an agnostic. I'm just an atheist with respect to gods that have been, like, you know, refuted, like Darth has refuted his own God. Cool. Thanks, bro. Yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, uh, ask yourself, can I kind of uh, mention again what I'm trying to steal, man, about Darth? Um, yeah, it but seems like hopefully it, could try to make sure that the thing you're reaching is the contradiction, though. Okay, well, so if I slightly restate it, it becomes contradictory. So if, if premise one is there is no neutral ground or null hypothesis concerning ontology or ultimate reality, and premise two is agnosticism is arrived at by first making a decision about ontology or ultimate reality and then being open to evidence, then therefore... Uh, agnosticism is a neutral position about ontology or ultimate reality that would contradict the, the first premise and I think obviously I, I hope you understand I think what Darth is really getting at is that like to state it succinctly neutral positions about what sustains the possibility of holding non-contradictory positions do not exist and he thinks that agnosticism is taking a position that they hold a neutral position Wait. about what sustains the possibility. Wait, can so I couldn't I couldn't track through that whole thing. Kind of like the way like okay. Sasha went and like actually like wrote the argument out and then we were able to look at it and just like easily see what the error is. I'd kind of ask for like okay. the same thing here. So like if you want to like write, write down chat. Yeah, just you know, write premises and conclusion and then we can look at it. And do you know how to make sure the argument is deductively valid? I mean, obviously you don't, I mean, the, the premise is you can't have a contradiction, right? You can't be begging the, begging the question in your conclusion. You, you need to be um, valid and sound. But do you know what validity is in terms of formal logic though? Why don't you explain it to me? Okay. No, it's, it's fine. No, you can just write your premises and conclusion, but there's going to be a problem with the form and we'll, we'll have to make sure that it actually, it were, so validity has to do with it being impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. There's ways to specify the structure of your argument so that that's the case. And if you don't know what validity like is in that formal sense, you won't be able to do that probably, but I can like help you do it once you write it down. Well, I'll, I'll write it in chat. Okay. Sure. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really sucks that that guy kind of, like, ran away because he was, uh, if I, for a second I thought that I might actually get through to him, but then he, uh, then he fled. So I see some people who somehow didn't track what happened there, like this guy Salt or Beethoven. Um, you know, I'd love for you guys to actually come on mic, right? Why don't you actually use your voice? You know, it's not that hard. You click a little button, you talk. And then you can try to explain to me. Oh, you're on mic. Okay, so explain to me. First of all, do you... So, Salt, are you there? Hello? I can't talk. Someone unmute Salt. Is he Is he not able to talk? Is there a mod in here? Okay, there yeah. we go. Go ahead. Yeah. All right, what's going on? That's fine. So, now, what did you say up here? You said something about me not understanding, AY ignoring the question... When you did you follow that conversation that happened with Catholic traditionalists? No, that's that wasn't what I was talking about. Okay, do you understand that when it comes to that conversation, that um, there's a distinction between saying I don't believe P and I believe P is false? I think you're confusing me with someone else. That that wasn't what I said. I was talking about the violence thing. Violence thing. Okay, well, I, I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Okay, sorry. Do you agree with Catholic traditionalists or no? That's my question. No, I'm not a, I'm not a Catholic, but that... I, oh, okay. That, okay, no worries. That's fine. It's all good. Okay, now, does anyone in here who, <laughs> ha actually, who actually holds this view want to try to defend it, right? Because so far we've had Catholic traditionalists try, but he basically just got completely fucking annihilated because he was trying to equivocate between P not being believed and believing that P is false, which are clearly different things. And you didn't seem to understand the example with the Higgs boson. 
I think you blatantly straw manned him, and earlier when I tried to bring up the fact that you were atheist about certain gods, you basically talk o talked over me and ignored me. You're rude, and okay. no wonder he won't come back okay. and talk to you. Now, now, first of all, do you actually hold the view that agnosticism is contradictory? I was trying to show you how you were atheist to certain kind of gods, and you I, just spoke I'm, over me. I'm asking, well, look, it sounds like you're just dodging. Do you actually hold the view that agnosticism is contradictory? Are you just going to sit here and just avoid the question? or? I, w I was explaining to you. I'm not asking this. Why, why won't you answer? Okay, you see, you're not listening again. Yeah, because you're not answering, so just answer the question. Do you actually believe that... You, you won't uh, let me answer the question. Well, it's a yes or no question, so start with a yes or a no, and then elaborate, right? Do you actually hold... I'd rather the... answer in my own way, and if you can't okay. have a no, conversation, Okay, no, 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 I, absolutely not. No, if you're if you're not able to provide a yes or no before you start your question, or I don't know, that would be acceptable also, uh, before you start your answer, then I have absolutely no interest. I need to talk to people who are actually capable of directly answering questions, or it's a waste of my yeah, time. Yeah, I've got no interest either, because you act like a big okay. child all the yeah. time. Yeah, so. so do you want... I'll, I'll give you one more shot. Do you want to try to answer the question, or do you want to just run away and hide like a little if bitch? If you want to have a normal conversation, I'd answer it in my own way, but you don't want that okay. to happen. So I have no, no, I, I have no interest in you dodging the question. If you're ready to provide a yes or no at any point, you just hop on mic, and I'll be happy to hear it out. So, does anyone who uh, isn't a sophist actually want to, you know, try to give the argument that agnosticism entails a contradiction? So, by not a sophist, we mean someone who's not going to try to. You know, derail, avoid answering simple questions, uh, try, try to, you know, ramble at me, try to ask unrelated questions. Is there anyone who just straightforwardly believes that agnosticism is contradictory and wants to deliver some kind of argument for that position? Does anyone want to hop on mic? Let me know in the chat. Ooh, yeah, so I mean this this is about what I expect right um, and all I would say is just like you know Darth has been avoiding this because he can't handle this argument uh, he would of course get just you know completely annihilated if he actually talked to me uh, just like I did to Catholic traditionalist um, you know Darth would make similar silly mistakes uh, all of his minions either just try to ramble oh, at you and Bagel. not answer questions like Foxy does, or they deliver failed arguments. So if anyone wants to try to give a non-shitty argument without being a sophist, I'm I'm happy to hear it. But if not, I'm gonna. I think Bagel uh, Bagel wants to answer ask a question. Go ahead, Bagel. Now, what do you need my help for, man? I uh, I thought you wanted to ask a question. Ask yourself a question. Right. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, what are you into? Ask yourself. Okay. The sorry, I'm not. I'm no. I don't want to do random fucking twenty questions. So, just before I head out of here, does anyone have an argument? I'll, I'll just ask this every time, and every time we either get failure or dodging, or which is, I guess, just a subset of failure. Do any of oh here good faith is trying okay there's no neutral ground or null hypothesis concerning ontology or ultimate reality agnosticism uses ultimate reality to make the decision of agnosticism therefore agnosticism is a neutral position on ultimate reality so the first problem is that the argument isn't valid um, so that's like a slight issue but you could probably make it valid let me think about how to make because if you like formalize this it would just be like p q therefore r which is just it's invalid but like i i don't i don't fully understand darth's position i'm just trying to steel man it as best i can as opposed to people coming on and just laughing at how you know he's wrong i think it, since he's not here it would just be best to try to steel man him as best we can yeah, I mean, you could maybe set it up kind of like a modus tollens. Would that work? Maybe you could be like, um, if, so you could be like, let's see, there, so there's no neutral ground or null hypothesis about ontology. So you could be like, if agnosticism is possible, then it's possible to have a neutral ground or null hypothesis about ultimate reality. Uh, it's not possible to have a neutral ground or null hypothesis about reality. Therefore, agnosticism isn't possible. That would be valid. Is that like the idea you're trying to get at? Yeah, I, I, I think that's what Darth is trying to get at. So set, setting aside ambiguity around terms like ultimate reality, someone mentioned that earlier, which is very true. I think it was Sasha. Um, I mean, 
we could i mean presumably ultimate reality can just be replaced with god and let's just let's yeah. just simplify by getting rid of null hypothesis we can just say neutral ground for now um so if we say if it's impossible to be new okay so if being agnostic means that one is neutral towards god or sorry t- yeah well maybe we'll just go with the formula formalization i gave before so if agnosticism is possible then it's possible to be uh neutral about ultimate reality it's not possible to be neutral about ultimate reality therefore uh agnosticism is not possible setting aside the you know confusion around what the fuck ultimate reality is that second premise is just like extremely suspect like why would we think that right and it's it's virtually question begging but maybe not quite just in virtue of a few little word choices but why would i accept a premise that says that it's impossible to be neutral about ultimate reality if you say it's impossible that's just saying that there's some kind of contradiction that's entailed um if one uh if one were to be neutral about ultimate reality so i'd want you to actually show what the contradiction is there and then if you can't then the second premise just seems unsubstantiated and the argument doesn't go through I think it's it's my understanding that he would say that neutral positions about what sustain the possibility to hold a neutral position in the first place can't possibly exist through some it's, transcendental. Oh, uh, good. It's really it's hard to deal to talk to you kind of because you don't like follow the structure of what's said. So like if the arg look, just try to follow this really carefully, okay? If there's an argument that says if agnosticism is possible then it's possible to be neutral about ultimate reality. It's not possible to be neutral about ultimate reality. Therefore, it's not possible to be agnostic. The second premise is that it's not possible to be neutral about ultimate reality. When you say it's not possible, that is, as far as I can tell, just to say that a contradiction would be entailed if we say that it is possible, right? If we say if we say someone's neutral about ultimate reality, there's some kind of contradiction. So what contradiction is supposed to be entailed there? wouldn't he say you're using ultimate reality in that second premise wait but that sorry so that again is not really understanding what a contradiction is a contradiction is some statement of the form p and not p so like the sky is blue and it's not the case that the sky is blue you know reality exists and it's not the case that reality exists what statement of that form is entailed by someone uh being neutral about ultimate reality whatever the fuck exactly that means I, I guess I'm just asking you, is it a contradiction if you're saying that you're neutral about ultimate reality, but in saying that you are using ultimate reality, is that contradictory at all? Wait, but I don't I don't understand why it's turning into a question. If we say that you're if we if you make you can make some contradiction where you just say like you're neutral about ultimate reality and it's not the case that you're neutral about ultimate reality. Like you can you can create a contradiction like that, but the whole challenge is to show that some kind of contradiction is entailed. And if we say that someone is neutral about ultimate reality, whatever, I, again, I hate how ambiguous that term ultimate reality is, but you have to actually show that there's a contradiction there or this premise that it's not possible to be neutral about ultimate reality is just unsubstantiated. It just seems to me that if we take the premise that anything you utter at all, I think this is Darth's position, that anything you utter oh, at all just in some way yourself. depends on an ultimate on an ultimate reality and then you're saying but i'm neutral about it that would seem to be the contradiction again i don't understand this position fully i'm just trying the problem the the problem is when people make statements that require something very strict logically but then don't like have an understanding of logic so they don't even know what they have to deliver like that's the problem you're getting into right now when you say it's not possible to be agnostic or to be neutral about ultimate reality you have to show from someone being neutral about ultimate reality that you can derive a contradiction right so like before even trying to derive it which is going to be you know a bit challenging if you don't know how to set up like arguments and stuff just what is the contradiction supposed to be right is it just a statement like the one i made like that you make a statement about ultimate reality and it's not the case that you make a statement about ultimate reality like what's the contradiction actually supposed to be it's got to be something of the form p and not p i mean again like i'm not an expert on his position i'm just trying to say that i think what he is trying okay to but do... you're just you're just repeating yourself like look let me okay. let me ask it this way can you actually state a proposition and negation in conjunction that's entailed 
by someone being neutral about ultimate reality uh maybe you could how about this since you're getting ready to leave why don't you do your best to steel man what would be darth's position that would persuade you like what he would have to show he would have to show that there's a contradiction right if he's if he showed that if someone's neutral about like so if we set up the argument and we say if agnosticism is possible then it's possible to be uh neutral about ultimate reality it's not possible to be neutral about ultimate reality therefore agnosticism is not possible i'll just grant p1 for the sake of argument and ask what's what's the argument for p2 right and at that point since premise two is a statement that something is impossible right we need an actual demonstration of a contradiction that we can arrive at if we assume that the allegedly impossible thing occurs right so you'd have to actually deliver some kind of argument that somehow shows that if someone is neutral about ultimate reality we get a contradiction right like all your argument did so this is the whole problem right like you all you did is push the question back a step cuz if i ask you know what's the uh what's the argument that agnosticism is contradictory right and then you give me some argument for agnosticism being contradictory that relies on it being contradictory that one can be neutral about ultimate reality it's like all you've done is make some other claim that it's contradictory to hold some position right all that's doing is pushing the question back a step now you just have to show why that position which arguably isn't distinct from agnosticism but whatever that um you're neutral about ultimate reality entails a contradiction right just like initially the question was show the contradiction entailed by agnosticism if you if the reply is to give an argument that effectively just says like oh if agnosticism is true then you have this belief and this belief is impossible all you've done is now made another claim about some kind of impossible belief or doxastic state or whatever and now you just have to deliver a further argument that actually shows that that's impossible right and if you say um, oh having a not having a position on ultimate reality is impossible because some other belief p that if you hold it's impossible then you'll have just pushed the question back a third step right do you see the problem there is it possible to say that premise two is equivalent to saying words have no meaning, but kind of contradiction or like the, you know, it, you're no, using it seems, it seems those seem like completely different propositions. Okay. Fair enough. Words have no meaning. Like where the fuck are we talking about words when we're talking about ultimate reality? Those no, are just I'm just different saying, things. You know, the problem of, of saying that like words have no meaning. And yeah, no, I, I understand. Sorry to be clear. I understand that what you're trying to do is build something self-defeating, right? But the whole idea yeah. with something self-defeating is that you're able to derive a contradiction. <laughs> so you have to be able to actually show what the contradiction is, right? Like, if we say, like, using logic to, to prove that, like, you know, logic doesn't work or something like that. If we, like, stipulate the, like, you, you know, using logic entails that it works, then it's like we have this entailment that logic works and we have... You know this conclusion that logic doesn't work and then we get some contradiction it's the case that logic works and it's not the case like i understand the kind of thing you're trying to do but the whole question the whole challenge is don't just try to give me some analogous example of a self-defeating case that might actually make sense you have to actually show that that's the case in this instance that's the whole challenge okay well i'll just leave it at this so to, to state that i don't make a statement about ultimate reality is you know obviously from darf's position to implicitly state that facts don't necessitate stating ultimate reality, which is an implicit statement about ultimate reality. It's, yeah, it's like, it's like if someone... Any statement. Yeah, so if someone says, for example, like, I don't make any statements about cats, it's like, that's a statement about cats, right? So if the only... If, if you want to modify the argument and try to make it into something, like, if one is agnostic, they... Uh, how, how do I say this? I'd have to think about it for a minute. You'd have to be like... If one is agnostic, then they um, claim to make no statement about ultimate reality. Um, but um, if one is agnostic, then they... Uh, so you'd have to be like, if one is agnostic, then they make no statement about ultimate reality. If one is... Oh, it's going to be hard to do this. I'd, I'd have to think about how to spell this out. But like, if the idea you're trying to get at is something like, you know... If you're agnostic, then you're claiming that you don't make a statement about ultimate reality. But being agnostic means that you are making a statement about ultimate reality. 
there's it's a bit hard to get to a contradiction because in one case you're talking about what you're actually doing and the other you're talking about like the statement that you're making or something like this but if the idea there is to somehow get to a contradiction that you are and aren't making a statement about ultimate reality i wish i could formalize it actually because that'd be a nice thing to do but the problem someone can do there is just go like they could just be like it's kind of like with sasha's argument right sasha formalized an idea like this a lot more clearly than um than you did or than i would be able to do without sitting down for a few minutes to actually write it um i'll see if i can scroll up and find it but like it's just going to be the same kind of problem that you could raise where you just go like well wait an agnostic doesn't have to be claiming to make a statement about ultimate reality like why does an agnostic have to make a claim an agnostic doesn't even have to know that they're agnostic So if I could give you some tips, I would like work on formal logic so you can actually make like valid arguments because that would be like hugely helpful in situations like this. And then additionally, try to understand what a contradiction is so that when you're trying to argue for a contradiction, you can clearly spell out the contradictory propositions that are supposed to be entailed. All right. Maybe uh, you can show, I like I said, you were mentioning that you, you have a, a good grasp on this. So maybe you can show how that second premise could actually lead to a contradiction if you want to be like uber charitable to Darth. I mean, I'd have to sit there and think about it, and I don't, I don't even know if it could, right? I don't, I don't think. I think you'd probably have to do some huge modification, and you'd end up with some kind of argument where there's just like an easily rejectable premise. But if the idea is to try to build a self-defeating argument, like it's hard to do it on the spot, but you could try to be like, oh, what would you say, like? If someone is actually agnostic, then they make no statement about ultimate reality. Um, but it's hard because I don't I, see the whole reason I can't do it is because I can't actually think of a way to set up this inference that would actually work and not just have an obviously false premise. So, I mean, I think that's the challenge that the theist has. Like, I don't even know what the point is of me sitting here trying to think of how to make this argument because I've never seen any convincing form of this argument. So. I mean, I think I'm just going to leave it with you. If you think you can make it work, then, you know, go go work on it. Isaac, there's a bum and a Lord Malicians that want to ask you a question. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, so go ahead, bum. Um, I know it's unrelated, and you probably will reject the question for, uh, I mean, you're, you can reject well, it. I was I, just going to ask I'd you. I'd rather you stay on topic, but. Yeah. Well, I wanted to know your thoughts on nihilism. Oh, I mean, it's it's just gonna go off into like, like what I I mean, do we want to go into that pathway? Does the other guy have a question that's actually on point? Uh, Sorry, about going off track, but no, that's anyway. fine. Does the other guy have yeah, something that's like about the topic might, they're talking about? I think so. I think so. Um, so, I, I guess a, a couple things. First of all, I feel like ultimate reality is a really loosely defined term. Um, yeah. In the way that it's you know, being thrown around, but um, other than that, I guess my question would be: as an agnostic, you know, could you say, you know, I don't know what ultimate reality is based on, whether it's God or not God, or you know, whatever God there may be or gods, um, but I'm going to use whatever ultimate reality there is to use, you know, logical inferences and all that to support my position right so even if there was a god and there is ultimate reality then you would be like using uh, what's around you in that universe to support your position and if there isn't then in that case ultimate reality is you know nothing or yeah so if you if you if i think i see what you're trying to so if we take for granted that state, like I find all of this language super weird, but like if you take for granted that statements have to be like, I don't even know, like, like they have to hold whatever the fuck that means, like in virtue of some ultimate reality, like that's, that's a, that's some vague garbage Darth language right there. But like, yeah, if yeah. you, if you take for granted that that proposition is true, there has to be some like ultimate thing whatever the fuck that means that provides for whatever the fuck that means <laughs> like your statements making sense or being intelligible or whatever then you could you could accept that proposition and still be agnostic about what that thing is yeah so you'd be like accepting that ultimate reality exists therefore you can make claims or make the uh i guess uh 
like no claims, I suppose, in, in terms of agnosticism, um, and still be logically sound, I suppose. Well, I just logic soundness is a property of arguments, but like if the if the idea is just like, are you somehow like contradicting yourself if you partially grant what Darth says and say, yeah, there's some ultimate fucking thing out there that somehow like guarantees like the truth of our statements or whatever um mm -hmm. if you if you grant something like that which like i find all that language so vague that it's it's not clear enough what's yeah. even being said for there to be a proposition there for me to be like oh i agree or don't agree with that but um if you grant all that you could still just have a further kind of agnosticism about um what the actual thing is right yeah um Oh, another thing was that, um, so I, have you seen that debate between, um, Matt Dillahunty and Matt Slick? Um, yeah, I watched it the other day, actually. It was kind of funny. Yeah, so I, I think it was that debate where some guy stood up at, at the end and asked, you know, um, so... As oh, a stood up. I think you're talking about, I think you're not talking about Matt Slick. I think they debated on air. I think you're thinking of the debate with Cy Bruggenkate. I don't know. I don't think so because I don't think I've ever seen did, a debate. Did he ever anyway. debate Matt in person? I've I've only seen the debate on air. No, there was one where they debated in person. Yeah. Okay. About, well, then um, that's not the one I saw. But whatever. Sorry. So what what happens then? It's fine. Um. Yeah. So at the end. So well, okay. So the debate was about. You know, the question was: Is secular humanism superior to Christianity? Um, and it really straight off topic, but one of the things that was mentioned was kind of the priest argument that like, um, that like, uh, what was it? Like, basically, um, you uh, presuppose the laws of logic to make your claims and to make inferences and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, this is Matt talking. And, and um, the laws of logic, the only possible explanation would be an ultimate being, uh, i.e. God, um, and <laughs> what I think Matt, uh, like Dillahunty never said, but what uh, some guy in the audience um, pointed out was, uh, hello, position with another presupposition. Why is that necessary? Um, so, do you think that that's like at all? valid because i've i've never heard that before but i thought it sounded like it made sense i didn't i didn't um, actually you cut out there for me i don't know if you cut out for the others but oh, sorry. Yeah, what did you ask is, i'll quickly repeat it basically um, oh wait I sorry i see i see one person in here one sec i see one person in here who might yeah. defend darth's position and i'll be very yeah. polite as long as you are also matt do you want to actually come on mic and try to defend this like crazy view darth has about agnosticism being impossible uh, as, as in unmute. Matt, yes, or someone wants to unmute him. Sorry, Malicians, it's just I I want to, if there's actually, I come in here to try to get arguments for this position. Uh, Marty and Matt, you're both unmuted. Go ahead. Matt, are you there? Yeah, just came in. Uh, yeah, what up, okay. Matt? Hey, man. Yep. How you doing? How's it going? That uh, agnosticism is impossible? Yeah, so I don't know if you caught this whole thing, but, like, Darth basically holds that view. I occasionally try to get him to defend it, and he, I don't know, whatever. I think he just runs away now. But um, do you do you agree with him on that, or is that just, is he just out on a limb there, and you're just kind of like, fuck that, I have my other arguments? Oh, I agree. Okay, so when you say it's impossible, you're talking about logical impossibility, right? Mm -hmm. And... Yeah presumably we're saying a contradiction is entailed by agnosticism oh according to the worldview paradigms and the worldview you're dealing with there's no neutrality with with uh with jesus he says if you're not for him you're against him okay but just to be clear like you would you'd say that agnosticism is contradictory or you wouldn't say that no, it's not true. It's not uh, a true perspective on things. We're right. arguing for the truth, and someone says, "I want to be agnostic towards the truth." Um, but, but, affirm or deny it. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand specifically, though. Are you taking Darth's view, which is that it's a contradiction? 
I'm uh, saying. I don't know why he thinks this. I think it's insane. But uh, so I don't. I don't want to stick you with his view if you don't actually. If you have some other argument, don't fucking fall down uh, the hole of defending no, it is. Darth it, shit. No, no, it's not. It would be a contradiction to say that they're making intelligible statements. Yeah, they're not providing the ontological grounding for that. So just to be to be a hundred percent clear, so forgive me. You know, uh, going over the point, and you can feel free to cut me off and do the same. Whatever, that's fine. But you are taking the view that agnosticism entails a contradiction. That's your position as a paradigm it doesn't want to make any claims other than making the statement they but don't know it, regarding this it's, thing I it's go. it's hard when you what? answer like that matt though because I'm, I'm trying it's to not, just i can't tell here. from that if you're saying yes it entails a contradiction uh, or no it doesn't do they know that they're making intelligible statements if so provide an ontological grounding for it they say i don't know so they want to have intelligibility yet not grounded so they are you know writing a check to their worldview it's not caching so it is a contradictory position Okay, all right. So what I want to understand is what's the argument that agnosticism is contradictory? Okay, they're making intelligible statements. Even the statement, I don't know, is meaningful, is intelligible. We can both understand what that means, but the worldview cannot cash that out. So they are they want to have this A, and the worldview is not A. Can't ground the intelligibility of that very statement. So they are being implicitly contradictory. Okay, so the first thing you said is that they're making intelligible statements. So I think I don't that, know. Yeah, is that an intelligible statement? Well, the thing is, like, so I could I could fight you on that too, but I think that we don't even need to go to that example because we can go to the example of agnostics who aren't making intelligible statements, right? Because it's not actually categorically true of agnostics that they're <laughs> making intelligible statements. What about like a baby or something? What do you think it is from the Christian worldview? You think babies are agnostics from the Christian worldview? I think yeah. that they, yes. That's I, nice external critique. Well, wait, to be clear, agnostic as in they don't have a belief that God exists or doesn't exist. They can express it. Okay, wait. It's so level of sophistication. Wait, so you take the view that it's impossible for a baby to be agnostic? Yeah, you're making, you're just assuming <laughs> your side to be right and going, Oh, well, this is just wise. I mean, I go, wait, read but, what the Bible says. So, so wait, but, but if it's impossible, what contradiction is entailed by a baby being agnostic? Because what you yeah. can't do, what you can't it do is, paradigm. but just, but just one second. Because what you can't do yeah. is, well, I'm happy to listen. I just, I was just going to clarify yeah, something. Yeah, you keep divorcing it from the paradigm. You just kind of, I was just talking about this one mitigated thing. I go, you're divorcing it from the whole. That's what you're not getting. I'm just trying to get you to view the entire pie. You go, no, I just want to talk about this one little sliver of the pie. So I, I can tell you why I did, and you can tell me if you think the move is illegitimate. I don't, I don't think it's illegitimate. So I asked you what the argument is, and correct me if I'm getting the flow of the conversation wrong, but I asked you what the argument is that agnosticism is contradictory. And when you started yeah. off your argument, you started with they're making intelligible statements. So I went to an example of a person who isn't making intelligible statements, like a baby, right? So I'm just asking you to show that it's impossible for the baby to be agnostic. Right, on their biblical yeah. purview, no one's agnostic. They all have an inerrant knowledge of God, suppress it, there's immediate knowledge and immediate suppression, given the fallen nature and no effects of sin. That's what the Bible teaches about anthropology the very nature of man he doesn't become an image bearer of god later on at a particular age oh now i'm an image bearer of god they're always an image bearer of god that's man's anthropology from a christian per biblical perspective he keeps assuming naturalism just well they're just neutral beings you know i hope well i'm, I'm really I'm not, christian purview of things wait i'm so one second i'm not making an assumption i don't think about whether a baby is um agnostic or not and if i did then i think i phrased myself wrong because what i'm asking is what contradiction would be entailed by a baby being agnostic and whatever your you know attempt to explain a contradiction is sure. the reason i'm okay. going to a baby is just to take away your ability to start your proof by talking about intelligible statements because babies yeah, don't I make mean, those well yeah okay well we were dealing with i thought i was just assuming you know somebody comes in the room or whatever we don't have a lot of infants coming in here. Um, no, I, I know, but it's still... Experience, so yeah. You could so, just slap yeah. intelligible experience on there instead of making intelligible statements. Okay. Any intelligibility whatsoever, Christianity is a precondition for, a necessary precondition for. So I can vary that any way I want. If it's anything intelligible, meaningful, or important, uh, Christianity can ground that. 
So, I mean, sorry to ask pedantic questions, but intelligible as in, like, just they have an understanding of something? Like, is that what you mean by intelligible? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so... Yeah. I mean, it's 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 arguable just what babies have an understanding of, but, yeah, like... Cognitive background. We use the term cognitive background. Is yeah. Employee, I, otherwise, you can't do any discursive reasoning or empirical induction. I, I guess... Or have understanding. I guess what would be easiest is just to have a working example on the table of an instance of a baby having a, quote, intelligible experience, just so we can use that in our further talk. What age? I mean, they have uh, sense experience. They're interpreting their sense experience and stuff. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to know if that qualifies. Start... Okay, that that's fine. That's fine. If sense, sense experience... Kid... Well, yep. I thought my kid had to name objects and just by pointing at it, but I did not point in order to teach him what pointing meant. He just knew. Yeah, but, I mean, even the sense, if you want to say, like, I'm just trying to not straw man you, right? I just want to know, I don't want to assume something to be a, quote, intelligible experience if you don't think it is. I, intelligible statements, I was comfortable going, mm -hmm. okay, I think we know what those are. But intelligible experience, I was like, you know, I need some clarity. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. perception, sense perception is an intelligible experience on your view. So Given their cognitive background I, to interpret that sense experience. Within the sense experience itself, it's not. We're talking about the interpretation of that. Just Adam's hitting, you know, photons hitting the eyeball. See, so it's propositional a, content to that. It's it's hard because I don't know exactly what a baby is doing when they get sense experience, but they're they're clearly like, I mean, a baby's able to like build a picture of like what language means, like over time or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's yeah. like that's in, just... that's interpreting an experience. Right. Okay. So we can account okay. for development and stuff like that. Yeah. They so alert. they're going to be asserting to stuff like a thirty-year-old philosopher is. In fact, if we're gonna say uh, so, if we're gonna go to intelligible experience instead of intelligible statements, and those kind of things are gonna qualify, I think there's no point in even using the baby example. So, but I mean, we we can, we can just to not move around if you'd rather. So. Let's say that we're talking about, you know, someone acquiring language or something like that. Why would that be impossible, right? Why would there be some contradiction if we say that someone entail or someone acquires language and uh, God, um, wait, sorry, what are we looking for? Con yeah, so someone acquires language and is agnost, wait, am I phrasing it right? You're gonna have to give me a second to think. So the claim is that agnosticism is a contradiction. So it's not possible for someone to be agnostic so and you're saying that the reason it's not possible i guess i've lost your train of reasoning what's the contradiction supposed to be okay well just the basic tag it's going to be the overarching argument no matter what um any intelligible experience is going to be you know like i use the two sides of the page analogy the two worldviews in the dialectic here and both are asserting, hey, my worldview, my side of the page can ground that intelligible experience, which is in the center. Even if it's a statement, God does not exist, or I don't know, or blue sleeps after the Wednesday. I mean, like, you can understand what those terms mean, uh, that which worldview can ground the intelligibility of anything that's asserted that's, that's intelligible and rational. You have to have the preconditions for it. Which worldview, which side of the page, which one, mine or yours, can ground the intelligibility of that very statement has got to count for predication, one of the many. Okay. So you cannot be neutral towards that because if you're uh, wanting to have that thing in the center, yet your side of the page cannot ground that, you are implicitly contradicting yourself. You want to have your cake and eat it too. Okay, can you spell that center, out though? The world you can't cash out. Can, can you spell out what, what propositions form the contradiction? They're just not backing it up. They want to say, I have this, and I go, what's the backup for? I don't have one. Wait, but that's not a contra. So when it, when so maybe you were too quick to say you agree with Darth's position because well, Darth thinks there's a contradiction. Sure I understand it. Well, they're saying A in the center, and the worldview says not that thing. Uh, wait, but a contradiction. I'm assuming yeah. we're talking about they a, are con. A. Wait, but I assume we're talking about they are contradicting themselves, right? Obviously, when you say not explicitly, okay, implicitly. But by okay. implication sh sh oh yeah that, no that, that's fine i understand right. that they're not going to have every person who claims to be agnostic going out there and saying p and not p obviously you think that the contradiction yes. is derivable they're not explicitly saying it unless they're a complete idiot mm -hmm. but um when so just one second let me just think of where we're at uh co contradiction is there a contradiction there right so darth's position he wants to say that there's a contradiction entailed by being agnostic now if what you want to say is there's a contradiction with some 
some fact like outside of their worldview, right? That's that's like a different kind of thing. I assume we're talking about an internal contradiction, like they're contradicting themselves, right? Because it wouldn't be interesting if we're talking about well, your... Wait, can I just finish this? It wouldn't be interesting if we're saying your worldview contradicts some other worldview because then I could be like, well, Matt, there's a contradiction on your view. And then you go, wait, I'm not contradicting myself. And I say, well, yeah, you are because you believe P and I believe not P. There's the contradiction. You're like, well, why, why would I give a fuck about that? I thought you're saying I'm contradicting myself. So to be clear, are you claiming, just can I ask this though, are you claiming the agnostic is contradicting themselves? Or are yes. you claiming, yeah, okay, so yeah. what's... Yeah, what's... that thing in the center is something yeah. they don't doubt. Even if it's the same and God does not exist, I go, okay, you, you know that for sure? I mean, just something that they're not going to doubt. Or the intelligibility of that statement, you don't doubt that, right? Uh, okay. If it's something that's, you know, they're not going to be committed to anything, I just go, fine, I can't talk to you. So Just give me your given. Give me what you, you hold to and you're not going to squirm off of. They okay. want to get nailed down on that. I say, fine. Now you're nailed down on that. Where's your worldview account for that intelligible experience? It doesn't. So implicitly, you got A, not A there. Sorry, but what what are A and not A? Like they're pro propositions, but what are the propositions? An intelligible experience. But that's they not say a. They have. They want to have. What if they the don't? Movie negates it. Okay, but let's just say they don't make a statement that I have an intelligible experience. There's still got to be a contradiction to there. Wait, wait, but what about a baby though? Then we're back to that example, right? Because let's no, just right. let's just wait. Said, can I just yeah, go over? Can I just go over they this? They're having intelligible experience, you know. Yes, okay, you would have the beliefs without expressing it. You can have it without expressing it, right? Okay, but wait. So we're well, looking the Bible for agnostic. S say again, sorry. The Bible does not teach that babies are agnostic, or that okay. any man is agnostic. Right, but what I'm looking for is that it's actually somehow going to be a contradiction if someone is agnostic, right? So when we say that when we say that if someone is agnostic, there's a contradiction in their worldview. Well, there's also this question of are you saying that there would be a contradiction in reality well, if people were, So let's get clear about this. Are you saying that there would be a contradiction in reality if people were agnostics or that agnostics have a contradiction implicit in their worldview? Implicit in their worldview, because they want to claim agnosticism, it's just, okay. it's, it's just abstraction per you know, Second Corinthians seven five. Right, and you appreciate the speculations. You appreciate the distinction there, right? One is a case of there actually, if agnosticism is true, there's actually a like a literal contradiction out there somewhere, and the other is if ag if someone's an agnostic, they have contradictory beliefs, right? So they're they're different kind of claims, yeah. right? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's, but, it's but all yeah. in their. I understand your worldview is erected. It's a they're fictitious I, abstractions right so i understand i understand you're making the second so what i want to understand we're just kind of going back to the same territory so you know forgive me but we're we're saying that if someone is agnostic then they have contradictory beliefs you know one of them can be implicit that's fine but what are the contradictory beliefs they're claiming agnosticism what if they don't make now, a claim right? I'm that, you can't do that well, then, I'm not even, then i'm not engaging them what if they're claiming Wait, but what if they're... So again, this is where we go to a baby though, right? So what, can I just do do the dialogue flow here? So I go, what contradiction is entailed by someone being agnostic? And then you they're start... Not, you're assuming they're actual agnostic. You're begging no, questions. Sorry, I, I mean... Well, well, no, I'm, I put an if there, right? I said if, so I, I, I didn't beg the they're question. Not. Okay, but, but the whole yes. idea of a proof by contradiction is if you assume it is true, then you can derive a contradiction. But, you know, what, whatever. I just So I say... What contradiction is entailed when an agnostic, um, it, so if someone is agnostic, what contradiction would be entailed in their worldview? I'm not asserting someone is agnostic. I'm not begging the question for the possibility of agnosticism, right? I'm saying if it were the case, what would the contradiction be? And this is the standard form of proof by contradiction, right? In math or in you know, logic or whatever. We assume that the thing we want to prove is not true. And then we derive some kind of contradiction from it, right? If you assume like, there's an even number that's not a multiple of two, right? You start by assuming that's true, and then you reach some kind of a contradiction by doing that, right? So it's not that I'm actually saying yeah. there, is, there are agnostics, and it's not that the person doing the math proof is actually saying, I, I will wrap up, sorry. It's not that the person doing the math proof is saying, you know, it's the case that there's, a mul that there's an even number that's uh, not a multiple of two. It's that you assume the negation of the thing you're trying to prove and then derive a contradiction. So here's the dialectic, right? I ask you, what's the contradiction that would be entailed in someone's beliefs if they <clears throat> if they were agnostic? 
and then you you start your proof by saying well they're making claims of this sort and then that's where i cut in and i say wait but you don't get to start your proof by saying they're making claims because i can go to the example of agnostics who aren't making claims like maybe it's a baby or something like that so yeah, you I'm have to give a proof that doesn't baby. start there we're talking about people we're actually conversing with and bring up the, the tag to them right but you're you're making the statement that someone would be you're the thing is like you cannot want to talk about babies and i think there's problems even applying the view to adults but you can't make a statement that quantifies over babies right if babies are a counter example then that's going to be a problem for They're a not kind a counter of... example to a christian well Given then biblical anthropology that's going to apply to all men then you'd have what their age that then you'd have to show that a contradiction is entailed in the baby's beliefs if the baby is agnostic. So that is to say, if the baby doesn't have a belief that God exists or that God doesn't exist, yeah, then the baby's it. beliefs so are somehow... An intelligible experience. Any intelligible experience they have is taught in the background and given by the hand of God. That's creating the Imago Dei. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're dealing with, the, what the worldview teaches about the nature of man. If they're claiming, You're assuming that on the agnostic side, they're to a total tabula rasa. They don't know jack shit. They have nothing, no cognitive background, complete blank slate. Here, I'll let you choose, Matt. Do you want me to yeah. keep going with the baby example, or do you want me to talk about adults who are making claims? Because I think the baby example is a problem for you, but if you think that that's, you know, picking a Not little nit, I'm happy just to talk to about adults if that's bad Bible for you. Bible teaches they have the cognitive background, just the, the different stages of development, different levels of sophistication of how that's expressed, but they automatically have that. The Bible also Canadian. teaches that God exists. Wait, wait so. let's let's just talk to let's just talk to Matt for a second. So, sorry, yeah. do you? I'll let you choose the direction. You want to do babies or you want to do adults? I'll I'll go whichever is better because I think. I do both. I've answered both. Yeah, but I'm but we can't do both at the same time. I'm just asking which direction you want me to go because I can go either direction. Uh, it's your questioning, but I think both have been sufficiently answered. We're we're getting hung up. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's say that we have. Um, Okay, well, let's let, I mean, we can stick with babies. I just don't want you to think it's some kind of cheap shot or something like that. So if we have someone, in fact, do we want to do babies? Yeah, whatever, fine. Let's say that we have the baby, right? So they, you have to show somehow that there's a contradiction that's entailed in the baby's belief system. Like, it's kind of weird to talk about a baby's belief system, whatever. There's some kind of contradiction entailed there if the baby doesn't have a belief that God exists or believe God doesn't exist. So what propositions would form that contradiction? You're assuming, like, once again, we're dealing with the nature of man from both perspectives. You want to say, let's have a baby, pure agnostic, pure tabula rasa, not making any truth claims, but just have an intelligible experience. Let's say, well, we put the intelligible experience in the center of the page. You know, okay, which worldview can ground the intelligible experience that they're having? You want to claim that pure agnostic worldview? It's just I don't know anything about metaphysics, epistemology. I'm just you know, all of a sudden, that, poof, intelligible experience just comes out of left field. And he's a ground, a, you know, grounding, accounting for, and you go, well, the worldview is vacuous. I just want to say they have this intelligible experience, vacuous of a worldview. I mean, like. But what's or, the what's the contradiction though in the baby's beliefs? Like the contradiction has got to be some statement of the form. Rasa. Just just one yeah, second. It's different it's, than it's, a person asserting certain things and in intelligible experience to me, making statements, verbalizing, blah blah blah. Yeah, that's why I offered to talk yeah. about that. If that's an easier case for you. Well, so I don't have a problem either way. It's just when you're just saying, okay. This person is bringing a lot of baggage to the thing that they're presupposing a whole bunch of stuff here and expressing, you know, their agnosticism or whatever. But they know they're going to be affirming stuff that the baby's not going to be able to articulate. <laughs> but on the baby side, you're just assuming, okay, I'm picturing the baby worldview here where there's nothing, just them, and they can make many knowledge claims. But they're having intelligible experience. Wait, but like, what's Matt, how do you refute the baby? So just just to be clear, we we both agree that a contradiction is a statement of the form P and not P, right? Like the sky is blue and it's not the case that the sky is blue. You know, I'm wearing shoes right now and it's not the case that I'm wearing shoes right now. We agree that's what a contradiction is, right? Intelligible experience is happening. Intelligible experience is not happening. Okay, so how is it entailed by the baby not having a belief that God exists and not having a belief that God doesn't exist? that the baby believes that intelligible experience is happening and the baby believes that intelligible experience is not happening. Because we're looking at the worldview paradigms that these individuals are placed in. On the baby's side, you want to have a totally uh, void worldview and they just exist in the void and say, well, they got intelligence. 
just to be clear, you, 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 you do hold the view that babies have beliefs as complicated as intelligible experiences happening? No, I just... just I well, then those beliefs can't be the contradiction. the developmental aspects of man's intellect and sophistication and stuff like that. We don't. But the, the babies have the cognitive background to employ that, to where they have enough cognitive background to understand when someone points at something and says, ball, bottle. But you know, wait, but it's but, instructing them what to name that thing. Wait, but you were clear that the contradiction is supposed to be within their beliefs. It can be implicit, and you know, if I say world if, view, okay, that you uh, want to put them in, whether or not the person is expressing that worldview or not is irrelevant. Yeah, any any time I say in their beliefs, I'm not trying to straw man your position as they have to explicitly say it. I understand that you can okay. say it's so. Just let that be clear anytime because I'm not gonna fucking remember to say that anytime, but. You know, okay. if, I, if I somehow try to make a move with that, you can be like, no, buddy, you already granted that it doesn't have to be explicit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand. I get you. Okay. So <laughs> the whole thing is that you said that if a baby is agnostic, right, it's an if statement, we're assuming the thing that's, you know, presumably not true to see if we can derive a contradiction. You're saying if a baby is agnostic, then there's going to be some implicit contradiction in the baby's beliefs. Now, when I asked what the contradiction is, some statement of the form P and not P, you said intelligible experience is happening and it's not the case intelligible experience is happening. But then when I asked you if babies have beliefs that are that complicated, you said no. So you've actually, although I don't think you meant to, contradicted yourself because you've said that's the contradiction in the baby's beliefs and babies don't have those beliefs. So it is and isn't the case that babies have those beliefs. No, I'm just saying between different levels on developmental scale. You're assuming they're a total, complete wait, tomorrow, Oh, so wait, I'm one second. Are you, are you, sorry, are you trying to say they don't have, sorry, maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Are you trying to say they don't have a, a belief either way about whether their experience is intelligible, but somehow that from beliefs they do have, you could derive this uh, further proposition that um, uh, experience is intelligible and this other proposition that intelligent uh, in, uh, experience isn't intelligible. Sure, they're having they have an innate propositional content to utilize in interpreting their sense experience and understanding the world things like that if they didn't have that they couldn't get off the ground but the whole thing though i feel like we're talking past each other because the whole the whole challenge for you is that you have to be able to actually get from this proposition that the baby doesn't have a belief that god exists and the baby doesn't have a belief that god doesn't exist to there is some kind of contradiction either in the baby's beliefs or that is derivable from the baby's beliefs. The right? framework that they're in, that's being asserted, you want to, which, which side of the page are you putting the baby in? Not on the Christian side, so that's divorced from that. It's in this worldview that has no content other than it exists, he or she, and is having intelligible experience or none. Or it not even have intelligible experience, just pure tabula rasa. It's just this thing, this uh, thing that exists in a um, worldview that doesn't have any metaphysical grounding, epistemological. Wait, but you have pure blank slate here, or what? No, but the the whole thing though is that you have to somehow from the baby's beliefs, right? From some kind of, I guess, some kind of explicit belief they have, you have to get to even if it's, you know, implicit or whatever, you have to be able to derive somehow a contradiction, right? We're and the contra statement, which I was talking about, we were going to have to get to what the very nature of man is compared to contrast the worldviews, of course. Yeah. But if you're right, saying, but, yeah, they, but they have intelligible experience, you know, if you're making an argument on behalf of the babies, you know, it's going to be your view of man. It's got to be part of metaphysics, part of ontology. It's all about that very nature and essence of a thing. If they don't have any essence, they just exist, and that's radical existentialism. It's just, you know, existence precedes essence. They get to find what their essence is. Wait, but Not the Christian the, purview so I feel like I'm probably going to start irritating you because I'm going to keep asking the same question because I don't think that I don't I'm not seeing the answer to the question, right? Because it has to be when you say that if someone is agnostic, that would entail that there is a contradiction in their beliefs. Not maybe not the ones they hold. Maybe it's like derivable from their beliefs. I don't understand, right? What you need to do is you have to go, okay, here's like the baby's beliefs and then derive, even if it means you go into beliefs they don't actually have, but that are derivable from the ones they do have. You somehow get... Are intelligible beliefs? Wait, sorry. You're starting you... on the non-Christian side of the baby is saying it's having intelligible beliefs. 
Wait, I'm just saying they have beliefs. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not stipulating anything yeah. else about the beliefs. Do we? Are they just... irrational beliefs? Wait, but no, it's not. It doesn't. No, but the whole thing is that you're the one making this claim, right? You're saying that if someone is agnostic, then there is a contradiction, implicit, or I guess or explicit, in their beliefs, right? So we take the example of a baby, right? Because that gets rid of any attempt to derive the contradiction from their statements, and then you want to say that somehow you're able to get from whatever beliefs the baby does have, if it's the case that the baby doesn't believe God exists and doesn't believe God doesn't exist, right? You're so somehow supposed to get from whatever beliefs they do have in that instance to two beliefs that would be contradictory. They can be implicit. No, or just right? put them in the right worldview bucket. If they cannot express statements, like someone else would come into the room, go, I'm, I'm an agnostic. I claim agnosticism. Oh, now I'm talking to you. We're expressing beliefs and stuff like that. You go, well, let's get someone who can't express beliefs. We're still putting them in the in their either side, in either bucket. I go, fine. You just go, okay, they're not making any statements or anything like that. There I go, fine. We can still deal with them. Just put them in either purview and then critique them on that basis. I don't. You know, it's going to get to your nature and manner. But it's got to. Matt, it's got to come down to an actual statement that's a contradiction, right? So the one that the one thing I heard you, know, you put the worldview content. I mean, those are going to be statements about the worldview that you're putting them in, Wait, unless but... they exist in a void, and to say, well, look, they're not claiming anything. Yeah, it's, it's, and there's it's, nothing there. It, it, no, I go, it's fine. It's, we have no it's, contradiction because there's nothing. It's fine if you derive the contradiction from something that's somehow like in in their mind. That's the whole idea. It's just like, look. The con when the one time I heard you state what the contradiction is supposed to be, it was that experience is intelligible and it's not the case that experience is intelligible. Okay, we clarified that babies don't have beliefs that complicated, so you think that that is derivable from the beliefs the baby it's does not complicated, have. Complicated, but it is intelligible. A very simplistic it's, level. Wait, it's clear. It's, it's it's clearly too complicated for a fucking a baby's not thinking. A baby doesn't have propositions in their mind like experience is intelligible. You agree with you're that? Begging the question. <laughs> so I can okay. express it like a 30 year old well, logician well, is dude. Well, well wait but one second so the whole <laughs> challenge though is how do you get from beliefs the baby has how do you derive from those beliefs the contradiction that experience is intelligible and it's not the case that experience is intelligible because we're dealing with the worldview can account for the intelligibility that they're even having whether they can express it or not is irrelevant now some you can express some things at a sophisticated level. Maybe the baby they thing can. is causing confusion. Look, let's here. Let's try. It. Let's I try. Just put a, putting the baby in either worldview. Go. Okay. Now what? Let's oh, look. Maybe the baby thing is causing confusion. Let's just try with. Let's try with the adult. Okay. So there's an adult. Now let's say that they're agnostic. Again, we're gonna try proof by contradiction. So we're just assuming they're that's purely true. Purely agnostic. When you say they're agnostic, I mean they don't have. I mean the conjunction of these two propositions. No, I mean the conjunction of these two propositions. They don't believe that God exists, and they don't believe it's false that God exists. Yeah. That's that's what I mean by agnostic. So let's use the adult example, because maybe that'll get rid of whatever confusion is happening. So they, let's say that an adult... They have intelligence? Is, wait, but let's say an adult is agnostic, right? We're assuming the thing that's supposed to lead to a contradiction. Now, Are they what... Purely blank slate or what not? Well, I mean, do they have any intelligence whatsoever? Wait, oh Matt, you're killing me. Dude, I... dude, dude, you're killing me. You keep going. Yeah, but they just keep saying. I just keep making them agnostic. Go, Are they a pure blank slate? When I, I already kind of relevant because if they're I've already a, a void I've already, a void, I go. Then there's nothing. To keep I've already them. specified what I mean by agnostic, though. Couldn't you like if I ask you right now to repeat what I mean by agnostic? It's, couldn't you repeat what I just said? It's not just uh, I just reject this one claim or something. I gotta go. We're dealing with any talents, proclivities, intellectual Wait, experience that they have from God's hand. I go, why are you divorcing them from this? That's why I'm asking, are they just a purely nothing? That you're talking about a thing that has nothing in it and go, look, they're not contradicting themselves. They're nothing. I, I haven't made any statement about if Being they're... a baby, does it have any intelligence? Wait, no, we moved, we moved away from the baby because I was worried the baby was creating confusion. Right now we're talking about an adult, okay? Okay. And what I'm asking is, you think that if they are agnostic, you can derive a contradiction, right? You think that's why agnosticism's impossible, because there'd be a fucking, well, there's further the question there, but whatever. Okay, so yeah. look, this adult, what I want is for you to somehow get from, they don't have a belief that God exists, and they don't have a belief that God doesn't exist, 
to a contradiction. That's what I need you to do. Hey, I've already explained that. That was the first illustration where we went over. Then you went to a baby. What's the contradiction the supposed to be? That. Intelligible experience there that they just asserted no statement. So if somebody expresses a statement, I'll go, man, I'll be the first one I'd lean on to. Wait, they haven't said anything yet. Right now, right now, it's just all we know, all I've given you about this person, I haven't given you any other information. I haven't told you any of their statements, nothing. All I've said is that they don't have a belief that God... Anything? All, well, wait, all I've said is that they don't have a belief that God exists, and they don't have a belief that God doesn't exist. And Where are they, you, a rock? Why, why are you doing that, man? I'm just trying uh, to... Okay, so this is obviously a human being that's intelligible and is doing stuff, so I can even observe the intelligible experience that they're having. I go, yeah, they haven't made a statement to me, but I go, how you ground in the very operational features you're employing? Right, but yeah, this is the whole thing you need. This is the whole thing you need to be able to do, though, is you have to be able to somehow get from the propositions that I'm giving you, which are just the propositions about agnosticism. This agent doesn't believe God exists and doesn't believe God doesn't exist, and you need to somehow so deal with the get... proposition as a state of affairs. I mean, Wait, but you need to. <laughs> I can witness someone. I don't talk to them or whatever, but they're doing they're doing scientific investigation or whatever. They don't make a statement too. No, no. no you're, you're, let's say, look, all all we've said is that there's a person who doesn't believe God exists and doesn't believe God doesn't exist. And what I'm asking you to do is to somehow get from those propositions to a contradiction. Why That's what you need to do. You? That's why I'm curious. Can you keep taking the, one mitigated slice of the pie and go, yeah, but we can, we can ignore the whole pie in that here. I'm just asking you about these two slices. I've, I've, not, I've, not, slices of pie. I've not told you to ignore anything. All I've done okay. is given I'll you two it in statements. The worldview perspective. I'm putting it in the whole pie perspective. As, as long as it ends with okay. a statement of the form P and not P. Well, we're making the statement that, once again, the transcendental argument is dealing with the worldview comparison as a whole. So it's always those things asserted within the overarching framework. Because you're dealing with the worldview comparison, which one can ground any little mitigated thing, any minuscule thing they want to uh, talk about, assert, that has meaning, uh, intelligence, is meaningful or intelligible. Even if they're not expressing it, such as a baby, they're having intelligible experience, employing operational features that if given the worldview, uh, which is nothing, because nothing's been thrown on that side of the page other than the baby exists and somehow it's intelligizing, you know. You know it, yeah, it's not accounting for it at all. It's not cashing out the very thing that's claimed, even though they're not expressing it, but we're saying on behalf of the baby, we're saying they have intelligible experience. No, there's no baby. Okay. Baby's how's gone. That how's the agnostic worldview cashing that out? Let's forget about the baby. We're just talking about an adult. I'm putting it in both perspectives. Oh, okay, both all right. Perspectives. Well, one's talking to me, one's not talking to me. Okay, just deal okay. With the as a whole. Okay, whole let's, let's, so. just, let's just think about... Okay, so just for the sake of simplicity, we take right, the adult. I gotta go in a few minutes. Uh, about 30 okay. seconds. Okay, but I just I don't understand what the contradiction is supposed to be. Like let before hey. okay, before wait, before giving the reasoning, just tell me what the contradiction is that's entailed by someone not believing God exists and not believing God doesn't exist. Before any reasoning, just tell me what contradiction is entailed. Any intelligible experience is either asserted or not, but or any uh, uh, principle, operational feature or intelligibility of a statement that is being brought forth and saying, oh, well, we're which side? Christianity side or investigation? Or any variation of investigation? Wait, but that's not a contradiction. We need a, yeah. but Matt, we need a contradiction. There, 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 that is a check that is put in the center of the page. The worldview has to cash it out. But Matt, it, you, the whole claim is not, there's a check. The claim is there is a hot... No, yes, the, it is. We, no, no, I, I was, it's, Matt, I was super, wait, no, 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 I was, I was insanely specific at the, the start center. of, I was, the wait, has to wait, I was very, very specific at the start of this conversation to make sure that you're making Darth's argument that agnosticism is a contradiction, so. In, when you lay it out in that scheme, two sides of the page, intelligible experience there, and we'll apply the principle of agnosticism, we go, well, they're on the other side, they're on investigation. Okay, Therefore, there's what? no neutrality. There's Wait, free, there's but what's light, the contradiction? Out by balance structure for argument there. But, but, what is, but what is the contradiction, though, right? Okay. The intelligible experience is either asserted or even implicit in the very operational features being employed. Whether or not they're saying anything, they're interpreting their sense of experience, even if they're deaf, uh, blind, and mute. 
you're still having a intelligible experience. Okay, but you understand so that a that's contradiction... in the center of the page, which we will be can ground the very and uh, apply the metaphysical, epistemological, and ethical uh, framework to ground the very intelligible experience or operational feature that they're even employing. But a contradiction. Worldview is asserting this, okay, and I think my worldview is grounded. We look at your worldview, it's vacuous, so it ain't accounting for nothing. Okay, so you want to have this, that's A, and then your worldview says, well, it's not that, we don't have it. Okay, wait, but what is this? That, okay, that was, okay, I heard A and not A. That's the kind of In thing I'm looking for. The page. Yeah, the center of the page is any intelligible experience that neither side doubts or says, you know, that the worldview can ground it, or at least the worldview is making the claim that they can ground that okay, so, experience so, in the center between the T junction. So the, the two worldviews that have a line down the middle of it. So in the middle of the page. The, the contradiction. I do have to go eat dinner, man. Okay, well, I'll yeah. let you go. But so. whenever, whenever we pick up, whenever we pick up, which maybe we will sometime, what I need to understand, and you can think on it, is I need an actual, clear spelling out of some proposition P and its negation in conjunction that's entailed by the propositions that A doesn't believe God exists and doesn't believe God doesn't exist. You can have the last word, but that's what I would like next time we talk. Sure, we'll go over the structure of the tag. Is that, is that all I'm laying out for you? It's basic structure. Okay, have cool. a good have a good meal, Matt. Okay, catch you later. Yeah, I would, uh, I would go as far as to say that I did not catch the contradiction. Good faith, here's the contradiction. <laughs> make the statement i do not make a statement about ultimate reality is to implicitly state facts that don't necessitate stating ultimate reality i am agnostic about ultimate reality therefore i'm not stating any it's still not valid but like if the idea is like if you're agnostic then you're not stating then you're claiming to like again i don't i don't fucking know but that argument's not valid i can't tell what the fuck the argument is actually supposed to be have you ever heard darth actually say his um like his whole spiel um, about like brute facts and all that. No, I don't fucking know. Do oh, so um, this is a little bit of a summary of the way he argues it. So basically, or at least t t the way he argued it to me. Um, basically, he says if you are uh, so so either facts are grounded in God or they're grounded in nothing or whatever there is other than God. Um, they're grounded in not God, right? Um, and he calls facts that are grounded in God created facts and facts that are grounded in not God brute facts. And he says either every fact is a created fact and or every fact is a brute fact. And to use facts, you must assert that, one, that your fact is either a created fact or a brute fact. And therefore, you can't say it might be either. But obviously, same <laughs> or, same problem well, is that there's like he doesn't demonstrate that there's a contradiction. He just asserts that there is. Well, I, I also didn't hear a con man. People really need to just like learn what a contradiction is. It's killing me. But yeah. the the if if the idea is like facts are either brute or they're not, and like then the second premise is like you have to make a statement about whether they are or not. Like, we can just forget whatever follows from there, because the second premise, it's like, why the fuck would I believe that? Yeah, it's, yeah, and, um... Can I, can we get an unmute I... on Avi? Whoever's modding, unmute Avi, please. Yeah, I also just wanted to point out that Matt multiple times said, like, you know, on the Christian worldview, mm -hmm. like, according to the Bible, babies know that God exists, or something to that effect, and it's <laughs> like, well, according to the Bible, like, everything that you're saying is, like or most of the things you're saying about God are accurate, so, like, uh, you, if you're going to just grant the Bible, then obviously, like, we don't really have an argument here, because if you're going to just say every worldview is, like, you know, could be right, then, or is right, or whatever, whatever my worldview is, is right, then there, you're just a, it's begging the question, as far as I can tell. Well, you know, it's hard to talk to... It's easier than talking to Darth. Like, I mean, last time I talked oh, yeah, to Matt, I ended sure. up yelling at him, but he was—he seemed to be in a good enough mood today, and I guess we got along fine. Yeah. See, Avi, Avi's kind of tracking the problem here. Avi, you're unmuted if you want on mic, but like, it's hard. It's it's difficult to talk to Matt about this because he doesn't. It's like with Darth, or it's like with Jay Dyer, or like a whole bunch of these people. They make these statements that require this like very difficult to deliver proof 
but then they don't understand the burden they've placed on themselves. Like, yeah. they'll make a statement like, you know, X is impossible, right? It's like, okay, wait, you mean there's a contra yeah. contradiction if X is the case? It's like, yeah, okay. It's like, okay, well, then what you have to do is that you have to be able to actually do a proof by contradiction. You have to be able to say, if we assume X, then we, der then we can derive a contradiction from there. But then yeah. when you ask Matt to do that, he kind of goes on this spiel, and then you sit there waiting patiently, but then it never culminates in a statement P and not P. Or sometimes it randomly does. You hear, like, A and not A at the end, and then you're left like, but wait, what the fuck were A? What was A? <laughs> So yeah. it's really hard because, like, what he needs to do is he needs to just be, like, the contradiction is, like, I'll just pick a random statement. Like, cats exist, and it's not the case that cats exist. And then he has to start with those propositions. Uh, this agent believes uh, doesn't believe God exists. This agent doesn't believe God doesn't exist. And he has to somehow, by valid deduction, actually reach that um, that conclusion. He, ha he has to, by, some by like, steps that make sense in terms of logic he has to be able to actually derive that statement that we that's contradictory right he has to be able to somehow show that so well enough it's really well, hard because it's like it's like two things it's like first of all he doesn't really understand what a contradiction is so he just kind of like sort of like talks and you don't really know what what the contradiction is supposed to be and then the other thing is if you ever get to a point that some contradiction is specified like you know the agent uh um uh or yeah like like experience is intelligible and it's not the case experience is intelligible if you ever get to a stage that the contradiction is specified then he doesn't seem to be able to actually show how that contradiction is somehow entailed by the original propositions that he said it was entailed by which are the propositions required for agnosticism that that person doesn't believe god exists and doesn't believe that god doesn't exist so yeah, it's it's uh it's just really hard because he needs to know what a contradiction is and he needs to actually get there from the propositions that make up agnosticism and it just doesn't really yeah. do it. Well, and I would press him on like the whole like I you know I already mentioned he kind of says well you know assuming biblical am or given biblical anthropology you know everybody knows that God exists even babies. Well, what I would press him on is. If I think so, look, let's let's exists. let's be fair though, because I don't. Sorry to cut you off, but like I think there was just a misunderstanding there, and then that was corrected because he he tried to say, well, babies aren't agnostic, which like it would be begging the question. But I think that what he thought was that I was begging the question also by saying, imagine there's an agnostic baby, and he's replying by going, babies yeah. can't be agnostic because Bible. But I realized what the confusion there was. The confusion is he doesn't understand that I wasn't actually stating that. <coughs> that babies or adults are agnostic i was saying assume it and then derive yeah. a contradiction not that i'm not actually saying that it's true <coughs> i'm saying yeah. it's on you to show that if it's true a contradiction follows and once that was cleared up he seemed to as far as i remember stop trying to prove that babies like he stopped trying to just assert babies aren't agnostic as a way to yeah. fight it well one i mean th this kind of gets into uh i guess uh would it be Calvinist uh, like argument? No idea. Like where where people say like everybody knows that God exists, but some people just reject it because such and such. Like my question would be to that is like or that claim would be like what causes people most people to reject that God exists? Because if you know something, how do you reject it? Like yeah, I but can't... that's that's spinning off uh, the fucking track though, because the that's getting yeah. off that that's getting off into like oh I see it. <clears throat> another challenge that I can raise yeah. them, they probably won't know how to object to, but that, I, I don't do that, right? I kind of, like, stay right on the point. Like, yeah, the point, the the point yeah. from the very start, even before Matt came in here, like, I did the same thing when other people tried to change the topic, is just, what is the fuck, like, <laughs> I could just go on about this, because it triggers what me. What is it's the like, contradiction? Like, yeah. what the fuck is, well, yeah, and, and if someone can finally deliver a contradiction, what's the actual argument that that contradiction is entailed by agnosticism, right? And it seems like, the pre-suppers either can't even state a contradiction and, and they get triggered when you try to tell them what a contradiction is or they finally do state one and then they're just not able to actually show that it's entailed by agnosticism so it just yeah. it's like i mean yeah you can raise other challenges for them but like why like they haven't dealt with this i just want to hear them deal with this yeah 
Like, you could still say it's not a fucking contradiction to be agnostic and just say there's good reasons to believe in God. It's like, why do they make this crazy claim? I have to assume it's because they don't understand what they're saying, right? Because whenever they try to prove it, they don't do the thing you have to do to prove it. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, you I've dealt with Darth before. Darth good luck. Darth will never fucking defend his position against me, but you can try. All right. I'd like to hear this. It, it won't I'll, go uh, well. It won't, I know. No, he'll flee. I mean, go listen to that mind. conversation if you want to have a laugh. Um, oh, he's texting him. Oh, no, he went to the voice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to hear Darth just, like, refuse. I see some people going over there already. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, Avi, do you have your mic? But Isaac, is the baby intelligent? What what side of the page is the baby on? Oh my god, it killed me. Did you catch the whole thing? I didn't. I didn't catch the whole thing, but uh, I don't think he actually knows what a contradiction. Is. Well, it's weird because he kind of does, because he'll kind of say a and not a, like he's. I hear him say that sometimes, but then he's never he rarely gives you a statement of that form and then sometimes he does sometimes you get like experience is intelligible and experience isn't intelligible and that makes you think like maybe he does know what a contradiction is but then there's like no like valid deduction like reaching it from the propositions entailed by agnosticism so you're like what the fuck i think you might want to ask him before you ask him for the contradiction just ask him what a contradiction is yeah, I mean, maybe. He, like, I thought I thought he understood, because I, I, I asked him at one point, we agree that a contradiction is a statement of the form P and not P, and I can't remember what he said, but I, knowing myself, doubt that I would have moved off of that if he didn't, like, at some point affirm the correct notion of what a contradiction is. I mean, maybe someone else in here remembers. Did, did You can put it in general chat, which is where I'm looking, but, like, did, did he not at some point, like, grant what, like, like say that he agrees with contradiction as I was defining it, which is just how anyone would define it who does logic ever. I mean, no one's typing, so maybe no one knows. But yeah, it's uh, it's really hard to, really hard to reason with people who they, it's like they think in this like, it's just like so not non-linear. Like you, you want to be like, no, like you, you must take point A and point B and you have to use inference rules, and you have to get from there to point C. <laughs> it's like, please. And um, another thing I um, was thinking, and I know this is also something that, like, is a little bit off topic, but um, I was thinking, like, is he arguing just for general theism or, like, Christianity specifically? Because I have talked to him about this before, Matt, I mean, and he's said something to the effect of well it can't be any other gods because all other gods are whatever contradictory i, I don't i think I he's don't a contradictory he, he might he might be one of the pre-sup gets you to theism and then further arguments get you to christianity but i would i think it's more common on in this fucking discord pre-sup community yeah. to be the um pre-sup gets you to christian theism kind but there are yeah. there are pre-sups who are like pre-sup just gets you to theism and then you need further arguments to get to christianity well, they, they were talking about how like Christianity, like I, I've, I've talked when I talked to them before. They were talking about how uh, Christianity is the only um, the, uh, theology that gets you to uh, a logical like uh, worldview because you know. Yeah, but right um, there, it's the just trinity. once, once, one sec though, right? Like yeah. th that already. Like so, this is. I wish I could like impart this on people, especially pre-suppers themselves, but. When they use words like the only, or like necessary, or impossible, or contradict, it's like, those things have really specific meanings. It's like, all of those are saddling yourself with the burden of showing that the contrary is actually going to yield a contradiction, right? Like, when he says, the only world that can do acts as the Christian worldview, that he's saddling himself with a burden of proof to show that every other worldview um, is, yeah. uh, there's, there's, yeah, so if he says well, only the Christian, sorry, it. sorry, if he says only yeah. the Christian worldview can do this, then he has to show that a contradiction is derivable in on every case where you say another worldview can do it, mm -hmm. right? If it's yeah. the only one, presumably 
if we're saying it's the only one that it's possible right it's like it's not possible in the other cases it's contradictory right like that's the whole idea i feel yeah. like people don't track this kind of language of like possible impossible necessary mm -hmm. contradictory and it's like if you do then you start noticing that preceptors are constantly making these like insane claims or they have to meet mm. these huge burdens like that yeah. somehow there's a contradiction if someone's agnostic or there's a contradiction if another worldview can account for you know like numbers or something like that and, and they they never follow and they'll be like they'll be like well like how do you how do you account for numbers and it's like wait like that's that's a whole other question and like i don't have yeah. a, a whole fucking you know like i don't know have like views on metaphysics about numbers but like that's i don't need to right your claim was that it's impossible for any view other than the christian view to account for numbers so yeah. what's the contradiction on any on the proposition that at least one other view accounts for numbers right and they can't yeah. do that well and i so to his credit he did try to actually make an argument for like christian theism is the only theism that accounts for reality or whatever it was he was saying but what i asked him was do you know like uh do you know every other like theism uh like or religion or whatever you want to call it every other form of theism in the world that ever existed or, or could ever exist and know definitely definit <laughs> definitively that those are all wrong and you know he basically said well that's ridiculous i can't it's know so every funny religion on it's, earth it's and then so, he muted me. it's so or, funny was, wait, that I, was matt or darth that was matt it's it's hilarious because that's like it's so funny when they saddle themselves with this claim and then you're like like wait can you show that and then they're like well that's crazy it's like well no that that's your claim like what yeah and and, and sorry one other thing is is yeah. just they could like just make a weaker argument just just why don't you just say like i think i have an induction okay like i don't think it's impossible that any other worldview does it i just think i've seen the christian worldview battle all these other worldviews and the christian worldview does better every time so the christian worldview is like more likely to account for this that then at least they're not like skewering themselves on the the fucking yeah impalement pole of like having to show a contradiction <laughs> right like like that's yeah. the, that's the stupidest thing like the just may at least make the that weaker inductive argument and then maybe you can bait the the non-theist into like okay well like show there's a contradiction on my view right but it's still yeah, super yeah. easy to value of that <laughs> but it's, it's still super yeah. easy to resist though because even if they try to make that weaker inductive case you can just be like well look like i don't i don't have an account for fucking like numbers or or causality or like I, I can't like give you like arguments for like why these things like exist or what or whatever but yeah. that's that's still they haven't shown a contradiction or, well <laughs> i mean if uh, well actually sorry i confused myself there i don't have to show that but if if they're saying if they're not trying to make that claim i'm so used to them trying to make that claim um but the idea is then they they have to actually be able to show they're on better footing than you right and it's like how the fuck do they do that right and they often just insist on doing a one directional critique where they're the only one who gets to ask questions and it's like yeah well that's dark yeah. thing <laughs> yeah well he I always ends everything when he says with a state or with every statement he says with a question and then if you answer the question he'll say your answer is invalid and if you don't answer the question i mean they're usually vaguely worded so you can't like understand oh. what he's actually asking but if you try to clarify he'll say answer the question answer the question answer the question then mute you and if you don't answer the question obviously he does the same thing so mm. any doesn't you know yeah. and, and even if you answer it like he'll just he'll continue on and say well you just trapped yourself and now, uh, yeah. well, I want to I wanna stand up for the noble art of asking direct questions, okay? So yeah. I do that to people, and there's a time when it's appropriate to do that to people, yeah. right? But when it's not is if the question is loaded, okay? So this is like mm -hmm. the algorithm people should use, okay? Well, first, the algorithm you shouldn't use is like, whenever I ask a question, I get an answer to that question before <clears throat> anything happens. That's fucking stupid, because you're not perfect. You might be asking a question that's loaded and then you're like screaming at someone to fucking answer a loaded question and like muting them <laughs> and shit and that darth does that all the time and looks like a fucking oh, yeah. knob right but like but the the, the what you should do there's i so but i don't go as far as to say well actually so since that's bad the alternative of like everyone gets equal time to speak and like you know it's like interruption is really bad like i don't go there i think that's i actually hate that position profoundly i think the right position is 
yes, absolutely, you get to force someone to answer a question, but there's an objection that they get to make, right? If they say, if they reply by saying, I don't know, or if they reply by saying, I don't understand the question, I need clarification. There's replies like that, which are legitimate, right? So if I'm asking yeah. a pre-supper, say that I start the line of questioning and I say, do you accept like Dart's position that, or let, let me make it less words. Do you think that agnosticism entails a contradiction, right? If they reply to me with a question, 100% I'm ignoring their questions, steamrolling them and repeating my question, right? Yeah. But there's certain specific things that if they say I won't do that, if they say, I don't understand what you're asking, right? Then that's, that's different, right? Well, how could it possibly be legitimate for me to keep asking the question if they don't understand what the fuck I'm saying, right? That's one or thing. Or like, what is Darth's position, you know? Like, well, that would be another really valid question. Because if they don't know his position, then how could they know that... They wait, what do, you, what do you mean, what is his position? I'm talking about replies well, they could give that I wouldn't... That I think it's... If, if they oh, give this, saying, you like, don't get you to keep them, asking. It, like, I'm just saying, if you ask them... What is Darth's or not? What is oh, Darth's, if they say I don't do know, do you agree? If they yeah, say do I don't, you agree with yeah, of Darth's course. Position, and they say I don't know what Darth's position is, then that then you would have to clarify. Well, you don't well, just say, well, no, because because that will well, but if they don't know, that would be agnosticism, and that's impossible. Ask yourself. <laughs> <Yeah. Nice. laughs> just joking. Nice. <laughs> what what up, Ask Dutch idiot? Yeah. I laid out the argument in general, Jim. Um. Uh, I don't see it. Are you the person I have blocked? You must have said something <laughs> frustrating to me at some point. Okay. A, have intelligibility. B, not have intel uh, not know what is ultimate. Without n knowing what is ultimate, your knowledge has no grounding. Without grounding, it is not knowledge. So you cannot make claims and be agnostic. Since agnostics make claims, they contradict themselves. Even claiming to be agnostic is a claim. I don't think I follow this, and it's also not valid, but, like... Let me yeah, try to get my idea of like what the fuck I'm talking saying. about the general gist of it. So, first of all, what's the contradiction supposed to be here? What propositions form the contradiction? Well, I think what the... Uh, you cut out. All I heard was I, I guess, think. Uh, if I understand him correctly, he's saying that you claim to know you're agnostic, that's a knowledge claim. You, like you know you're agnostic i think his time. mic's working again let's let's let him talk since it was his question are you back dutch idiot okay. yeah uh, by the way it's not my position right but uh, it's just what i usually get from that uh, okay when he makes his case so, so just so, just so to redirect yeah, though i, I just what i what i just want to know is just what is the actual contradiction because some contradiction again statement of the form p and not p what's the contradiction supposed to be that's entailed here well, if you cannot make knowledge claims implicitly if you don't know the ultimate, and, uh, le let's grant that proposition, right? Uh, because that's what they believe. Wait, but sorry, before um, before going through, wait, but what you're doing is you're going through the reasoning. What I wanted to know is just before we get into the reasoning, because sometimes you don't need to if the conclusion isn't the thing it's supposed to be. What actually is the contra- is yeah. making, The contradiction is making a knowledge claim that is the claim, I am agnostic. That is a knowledge claim, right? You're, you're claiming knowledge about yourself. And it contradicts with the fact that you don't know what is ultimate, right? Without knowing what is ultimate, your facts have no grounding, and so without I, grounding, I, they are not facts. So okay, so, so, so I can only, I can only guess, but is the contradiction uh, you have knowledge and you don't have knowledge? Y yes, you're making a knowledge claim uh, without having the ability to have knowledge. Because you're lacking okay knowledge. but but strictly speaking it's not a contradiction when you put it like that that's why i'm giving it as a strict formal contradiction right the, the contradiction is you have knowledge and it's not the case you have knowledge is that what the contradiction is um no because in, in the agnostic perspective of course he believes he might have knowledge anyway right? uh, but their claim is that that's impossible so from their perspective um, it is a contradiction because it's contradictory to have knowledge and not know what is ultimate because if you don't know what is ultimate you don't know what is possible no. or impossible okay so blah, blah, blah. wait but there's conf there's confusion this is why i keep trying to phrase it as a strict formal contradiction 
right? Yeah, I'm, I'm so, not sure if they have a strict form of contradiction, right? Okay, so okay but have... yeah, but if they if they don't, then that's just what I've been saying every fucking time I come in here, right? So I, I could I could take a guess at what the contradiction is supposed to be here. Like maybe the contradiction is they have knowledge and they don't have knowledge, or they believe they have knowledge and they don't believe they have knowledge, or uh, well, they they think. They they believe there's an ultimate and they don't believe there's an ultimate. Like I could I could okay. take guesses, no. but I don't really know what the contradiction is meant to be here. It's like it's yeah. ambiguous. Okay. So you do agree, Bob? Can you mute your keyboard's clicking off? Oh, well, I don't know why. That's all I have to do. Um, that was probably me. Yeah, I said Bob, not Dutch idiot. Sorry, please continue, Dutch idiot. Oh, you do agree that making the claim that you are agnostic yourself is a knowledge claim. If you claim that you're agnostic, not necessarily. It could be a belief. Well, then it's not a claim. Right? Then it's... You don't think you can make a claim about your belief? Mm, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, knowledge, the, the like classical idea of knowledge, I don't know a lot about this, it's like epistemology, but like the classical idea is like JTB, like justified true belief. So like belief is a precondition for knowledge. But like even people who are big on like, you know, knowledge is like a useful concept and like that's something we need to like preserve in philosophy and stuff. It's like those people still generally speaking take belief to be a precondition for knowledge, like a, a necessary but insufficient condition and something that you can have without having knowledge, right? So like most most people aren't gonna say that you either have knowledge or you don't have belief. Most people who you know believe in knowledge are gonna say you can have belief that isn't knowledge right like can't you have like false beliefs and aren't those like not knowledge maybe like something like that would be an example but but even making the claim even stating your belief uh, it doesn't have to be a it, knowledge claim it could just be a belief claim well it implicitly states that you understand language and things like that so but those could also be beliefs well okay but now but you're but being... i'm not i'm not being anything i'm being let's say that this person is just making claims about their belief. I mean, maybe you could try to make a parallel argument that says, like, you have beliefs and you don't have beliefs or something like that. But if the idea is that if someone says, you know, I'm an agnostic, that has to be a knowledge claim, they might not think that that meets the criteria for knowledge, or they might not even accept that knowledge is a thing, whatever. But they might say that doesn't meet the criteria, but it's nonetheless a belief I have. So no, it's not a knowledge claim, it's a belief claim. Hey, ask yourself, uh, can I try to, like, give you the argument? If Dutch Idiot's done, he was first, but... No, you can go ahead. But I, I kind of just want to ask him, do you appreciate the problem there when you try to insist that that's got to be a knowledge claim, that um, I'm agnostic? Surely someone could just be stating a belief. Like, say say that they're wrong about it, right? Yeah. And they claim that they're... I, I think their general gist is that people make knowledge claims, right? So when you're, you're agnostic and you're going to make knowledge claims because you're in a debate, uh, that's when the contradictions start appearing, right? Within their perspective. Yeah, so uh, for me, I'm not, I'm not totally... It's not directly uh, a contradiction, uh, but that's why Matt always wants to, you know, what is your beliefs otherwise than just being agnostic, right? That's why he wants more information about the subject. That's why he was asking you for more information. But wait, but, but agnosticism... Uh, the thing is, it's not entailed by agnosticism that one has knowledge, right? One could be agnostic and just have beliefs. So if the attempt to show... Wasn't one sec. So if the attempt to show that agnosticism entails a contradiction somehow relies on knowledge, right? Then that's not going to go through because you could have someone who's agnostic and doesn't have knowledge, right? That's just, that's just a huge problem with an argument like that. It's like if I try to make an argument that, you know... If I try to say, like, all X are Y in virtue of property Z, but only, like, 50% of X's have property Z, it's like, well, no, then, you, then you've got a problem. Your argument isn't ca targeting the whole category of X, yet your statement in the end is a statement about the whole category X, right? Yeah, like I said, I don't hold the position right, but um, it's, it's generally, I think, what Matt wants to say. And even though it's not technically a contradiction, like you said, and I agree with you, um, I, I do believe that most people do 
that I believe they have knowledge. Well, even though that, Dutch they... idiot, I think, I think there's different things. I think there's things that are contradictions, like some of the ways that I put it are contradictions. Like, you have knowledge and it's not the case you have knowledge, or you have, or you believe in an ultimate and it's not the case that you believe in an ultimate, whatever the fuck that means. Arguably that's not a proposition, but that has no definite meaning, but whatever. Um, some of those things I'm happy to call contradictions, but it's like, it's like a two-pronged problem they get here. It's like, either we clarify something that actually is a fucking contradiction and then the second we get that on the table the proponent of agnosticism being contradictory just says well well no like that can't be the fucking thing we're talking about because i don't know how the fuck i'd possibly get there right or the thing that's on the table isn't a contradiction um and then yeah so it's, it's like one or the other it's like either it's not even a contradiction that they're trying to get to or it is a contradiction but then they have no idea how to get there and that's kind of what happened here right there's this argument but then we look at it and it's like, well, it, wait, it's not spelling out a contradiction. What's the contradiction supposed to be? And then once I put up candidate statements that actually are contradictions, you're like, well, well no, I mean, I can, it can't fucking be that. I have no clue how to get to that. No, it can't be that. I have no clue how to get to that. That's like the problem with all of this, right? Yeah, I think strictly speaking, you're right. Because, well, I'm on your side, right? But um, I, I do think that that's where they believe that the contradiction is or lies, right? Where people make knowledge claims and claim to be agnostic. Well, I look. I can I can agree with you that they think. Also, I'm gonna unblock you. You seem I don't know what you would have done to annoy me, but you don't seem that bad. Um, you don't seem bad at all. Um, but yeah, I can agree. I, I can well. agree that. I, I can agree that the the like they think that the contradiction is in some very general sense to do with like belief or like knowledge or epistemology or, or like metaphysics or something like that like i agree that there's something in there <laughs> that they think is contradictory but it's not clear what the fuck it is and anytime we do actually clarify something that would be a contradiction they're like well that's not what i could be arguing for because i have no fucking idea how i'd derive that well next time you talk to matt if it happens maybe ask him if this is where he wants to go because i believe this is where he wants to go so yeah, I mean, I, 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 well, I wouldn't specifically ask him if, if this invalid argument is what he wants to deliver, because I think that would be uncharitable, no, sure. but, like, I, I mean, the general gist, I, mean I, I tried to be very fair to him. I tried to keep trying to guess fairly at what he's saying the contradiction is. Like, are you saying the contradiction is this? Or are you saying it's that? Also, Le Legionnaire, I see that you're back. Uh, how was, you know, I would assume it was Darth yelling at you, or maybe Darth, like, just going on a bitch fit about me. How, how was that experience? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, he just said uh, that you go into full, tr full blown troll mode, or whatever that means, and um, yeah, he's just, he's just not willing to engage, I guess. I, I wonder how many people in this room right now, regardless of whether you agree with me or not, actually seriously hold the view that I'm a troll. Like, is it not completely obvious from my whole demeanor that I'm serious about these questions? I mean, it's just such an insane view. Like, how would you possibly think I'm trolling? Uh, how many Isaac, people do you think are on his troll list? Ask yourself. I mean, apparently a lot of people. It, se it seems yeah. almost like the troll list is like... I wish that we had access to that list, because it would be like a good little catalog of like everyone who's like knows like the first thing about philosophy. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, that's probably not fair. There's probably a lot of idiots on there, but still... Okay, I'm getting uh, worn out. Does anyone else want to try to fucking prove this stupid point about agnosticism, or can we just call this Isaac, a day? Isaac, I, and... I threw that in the chat. Does that even come any closer to a contradiction in your you're, eyes? You're really dedicated to this, eh? Let me go find it. I'm just trying to steal, man. I hate seeing this, like, inability to come to... I like seeing these arguments you, go somewhere. You don't, you don't think that I try my best to steal, man, when I'm talking no, no. to these... I mean, no, I, you, I, you, I agree that there's I, there's a point of steel... Man well, for, for the record, I think there's a point of steel manning someone that's just ridiculous. But, you know, I, tr I do seriously try to be charitable with their arguments. But, yeah, okay. Contradiction. A person, A, says they do not believe in ultimate reality, and they implicitly say they do believe in ultimate reality. So... That's, it's still, the way it's phrased isn't quite a contradiction, but the contradiction is this person believes and doesn't believe in ultimate reality. That's the contradiction? Yes. Okay, so there's, there's a, I won't go down this road, there's a slight problem someone could raise of like, maybe that's not even propositional because ultimate reality doesn't have any clear definition, but that's kind of a cheeky point, so let's just, let's just grant that. So agnosticism entails the person does not believe in ultimate reality. Uh, okay, so I, we probably need to clear up what ultimate reality means because that seems 
suspect. Is ultimate reality a synonym for God? It would be ontological bedrock, the thing that secures all the particulars. I'm trying to use kind of Darth's language here. Okay, well, wait. Then I don't, I don't know that that's entailed by agnosticism, right? Maybe they agree that they're like I hate words like metaphysical bedrock, but I don't say exactly. it seems so. Hey, Google, shut up. Google, stop. Hey, Google, be quiet. Sorry. <laughs> um, they, uh, I hate words like metaphysical bedrock because it's like so vague. Like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? But I don't see how this is entailed, right? That if someone is agnostic, then they don't believe that there's some kind of metaphysical bedrock, right? Maybe they do, but they are unconvinced of the proposition that said metaphysical bedrock is God in virtue of the fact that they're unconvinced of the proposition that God exists, right? So premise one, even the, there's other problems like the argument isn't valid and the thing that you said is a contradiction is quite a contradiction, but if we steel man the contradiction into an actual contradiction and just pretend the argument's valid, it still fails at the first premise because they could believe there's some kind of metaphysical foundation, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean, that's just not like, you know, God. Okay, but, but even if we just say it's some um, deistic or even just some, con so any conception of like, uh, ontological bedrock, you know, would it doesn't have to be deistic or theistic. It could be, it could be atheistic. Okay, well, well so, some, I mean, I understand. May ultimate maybe, reality maybe they, maybe they don't even, they don't know about what the nature of ultimate reality is. They're just convinced that, I hate that term, but they're just convinced that such a thing exists. They just don't know enough of its qualities to say whether it's like a mind or whether it's just some like process or, or thing or something like that. Right? So if, if the Either. first premise is like, if you're an agnostic, you don't think it exists at all, they can just reject that. They could just be like, no, like, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I do uh, believe it exists, but um, I'm not convinced that it's uh, theistic. So the first premise is false though in virtue of the fact that they believe it exists. So again, this is another like subset criticism problem. People always give these like, where it's like, here's an argument against agnosticism. Let's target the subset of agnostics making intelligible statements. Let's target the subset of agnostics who don't think there's a foundation to reality. Let's target the subset of agnostics who X and Y and Z. They do it with the trans topic too, where they go, let's target the subset of trans people who believe they're a bio they are biologically the opposite sex, something like this. And it's like, you know, if you want to make some categorical argument, like all trans people are delusional or like, all agnostics are contradicting themselves it's like you can't build your criticism off of something that only applies to a i guess i should say a proper subset if we want to be technical a proper subset of um the group that you're trying to make the categorical conclusion about do you appreciate hey, that ask, ask yourself can i try to tell you how i see it or whatever <laughs> Yeah, but I'm I'm burning out on energy, I think. So I'm probably gonna I'll listen to you, but then I'm gonna go. So who was that? It's me, Franks ninety two. Yeah, what up, Franks? Are you a Christian hey, or are up, you buddy? are you yet another atheist? No, well, I'm an atheist, bro, and I don't believe it at all. But what what I what I try to like what how I take it to mean is if you don't affirm the the ultimate, you deny the ultimate. So when you say I don't know what's ultimate, you're not. You're not implicitly saying, uh, like, that I don't affirm the the ultimate to be uh, God, but what you're saying is implicit, not e explicitly. You're uh, you're denying God. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's wrong. It's not the case that if you say I'm not convinced that, like, let's just forget the word ultimate and all that. Let's just say God exists. Okay, that's the proposition because this is the same for any proposition. It's not the case that if you say I'm not convinced that P is true that you're saying or that you implicitly have the view that p is false right you can it's like people don't understand that you could be unconvinced that p is true and unconvinced that p is false right so you're trying to do the the classic jump that a lot of these people do where they go from you don't believe p to you believe not p right but that's that's just not a valid move Right, picture the Higgs boson. Before they found that, did um, did you have to either believe it exists or believe it doesn't exist, or were a lot of people, you know, physicists included, just agnostic about whether the thing exists? They just didn't know if it exists or not. Do you yeah, get that anything is implicit? Wait, I, 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 let me just first for Frank's first. Franks, do you do you understand that with the Higgs boson? Yeah, I understand it completely. Listen, I'm agnostic, and I totally understand that. But like, 
Yeah. The way that he sees it is like. Um, yeah, but but I know I know how he sees it, which is he thinks that if you aren't convinced that P is true, you think P is false. But you understand that that's a bad move, right? You understand that. Doesn't... Yeah, I totally understand that. I okay. mean, he got me to it. Like even talking to him, he he like who's he, he doesn't. Dar or, sorry, who's he? Darth or Matt? No, Darth. I mean, right. not Matt. Matt is cool, um, but he doesn't even allow you. You cut out. He doesn't allow you to what? He doesn't allow you to use agnosticism when you talk to him, so. Um, Darth, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, ever since I fucking schooled him on it, he kind of runs from it. I, I understand. I would, too, if I were a Christian sophist. Um, who was the person who asked if I think anything's implicit? Yeah, I mean, I, of course, agree with that. Like, I think that you can talk about, like, linguistic presupposition. Not something I've read a lot about, but something that, as far as I understand, is, like, pretty standard for philosophers to accept and doesn't seem controversial at all. Like, if you make some statement, like... You know, I really liked the movie last night. That statement like presupposes that there was a movie last night and that you watched it, right? Like I don't think that there's nothing implicit, right? So here's another I'm starting to notice patterns, man. Here's another move that theists not it's not really theists, it's like presuppers make, right? They go when I when I say that it's not entailed by saying I I don't believe God exists, that you believe God doesn't exist, they try to respond to me by saying well, don't you believe anything's implicit? Don't you believe that there's there's anything that's like implied by something else that you say? And I go, yeah, of course. The, I'm not categorically objecting to the idea that there are things that are implied by our statements. That would be a hilariously stupid position, right? I'm denying a specific instance of it. I'm denying that the proposition, I believe God doesn't exist, is entailed by what, I mean, it's weird to even talk about statements here, but I'm denying that it's entailed that you believe God doesn't exist if you don't believe God does exist. So there's also a bit of a conflation there between linguistic presupposition, something that's presupposed by your language, versus something that's presupposed or, or is required for some state of affairs to be the case. Because you could, if, if we're talking about someone being agnostic, that doesn't have to be that they make a statement that then presupposes something, right? They could just be agnostic and not make a statement. Um, but you might still say that some state of affairs has to be the case for them to be agnostic, like there's a precondition for it. And, I mean, I'd be fine with that, but what I'm not convinced of, so I'll just put it two ways, whether you want to put it in terms of their utterances or in terms of the state of affairs that they're agnostic, okay? I'm not convinced that the utterances that one makes as an agnostic somehow um, uh, presuppose um, anything that's contradictory. And I'm not convinced that the state of affairs of one being an agnostic um, uh, presupposes something that's contradictory. So in either case, whether it's the a linguistic presupposition or whether it's something that's like presupposed or, or necessary for a state of affairs to be the case, in neither case am I convinced that if agnosticism is the thing in question, that there's something contradictory that follows from one of those kinds of like entailments. So basically what you're saying is you're not presupposing God and you're not not presupposing God, right? Yeah, you don't have to make a statement about it, right? You could you could be maybe it's the case that somehow all of our statements presuppose God and we just don't realize it. I think that's exactly what he's getting at. He's saying that neutral positions about what sustain the possibility to even hold a neutral position don't exist. They all entail God on his worldview. Wait, but there's this also, we have to, it's, I really want people to be sensitive to this. Be sensitive to when the conclusion shifts or when, when statements like impossible or whatever are made, okay? Because you just said entails God exists, right? But the whole thing is not about whether someone being agnostic like entails the existence of God or something like that. That's different. What we're talking about is someone being agnostic entails a contradiction, right? That, what's, that's what we need the proof of. Um... Yeah, and there's also just, I wish I could draw, like, some sensitivity to these, like, hilarious statements precepts make. Like, whenever you hear precepts say something like, you know, the impossibility of the contrary, or, like, X is necessary, or X is, like, the only that can account for this, or any anything like that, you should always try to frame that in terms of what is the thing they're saying that's impossible, and then ask for the argument for it. Like, if they say, my view is the only view that can account for this, then the thing that's impossible is there exists another view that accounts for this. So they have to be able to show that there's a contradiction if that statement, another view accounts for this, is true, right? Or if they say, you know, the it's impo any other, any non-Christian worldview is impossible. It's like, 
well, then they have to show that all of those non-Christian worldviews contain a contradiction, right? It's like you have to, so you have to be sensitive to that. Another one that's really common is this circularity bullshit. It's kind of far off from all, all of this stuff, but it's just an, and it's similar in that it's a crazy statement precepts make all the time that you can like catch them out on. They'll often say that, yes, I'm like, if you ever manage to somehow get out of their dialogue and, and get to like how they ground some of these things that they're claiming you can't ground or whatever. It, fuck, I hate the word grounding by the way, but if you, if you do that, then they'll often say, well, I agree. Like my, like Jay Dyer will do this. I like, yeah, my argument's circular, but there's, there's two kinds of circularity. There's virtuous and vicious circularity. And if you ever get that statement out of a precept, that's, that's a death blow, right? Like if they ever say every other worldview is impossible, if they ever say, uh, there's virtuous or vicious circularity, these are things that should, the second you hear them, it should be like red flag, alarm bells, like just ask the priest supper to explain that and they're gonna fucking die. Well, he's a coherentist, so that, that's a circular, that's a circular epistemology. But there's a distinction between, on his view, vicious circularity and virtuous circularity. I know, I know, I know, I know about the distinction. I know, I know so, that it's not accepted in general. But, but it's I, not. It's not just. You? It's not just that it's not accepted, which it obviously isn't. It's like, what the fuck is the distinction supposed to be, right? And if you ask that, they'll just faceplant. Well, so uh, ask yourself, what are your presuppositions? I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I'm sure there's things that I take if by presupposition. I'm. I guess we just mean something that I believe and that I can't justify. Something a priori, yeah, that you that you believe without, like that's kind of an uh, tacitly I assumed. Know, like, I think the I, definition says. I mean, it's weird because I I seem to operate like as if the external world exists, for example, but I can't like prove the external world exists. But it's weird because if you actually ask me if I believe that, then I'm not actually sure I do believe that. I just don't know that I can like make myself operate differently. But if you could, let me just cut to the chase. Like, if you can find something that I presuppose and that I don't have an argument for, it's like, I wouldn't be that surprised, right? I don't think that I can justify every fucking belief I have. Imagine making that claim. Yeah, I could justify all my beliefs. It's like, this is a hilarious claim, right? Like, maybe they're justified in a way that I don't know, but I've never claimed to have access to the justification for every belief that I have. There's also some skepticism about if justification is a thing, but whatever. So it's not going to somehow get you to this position that agnosticism is contradictory, if that's what you're trying to get to, that I can't justify all my beliefs. And it's not going to get you to Christian theism is true. It's not going to get you to Christians can justify their beliefs uh, more adequately than an atheist, right, or an agnostic. So... Yeah, I mean, all I was I, just wondering what you tacitly assume. Like, I would assume logic. You said you're kind of a weak externalist. Well, like a weak so there's some. Realist. Well, it's weird because I'm sure you can find examples if we sit here and do this. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. But like, there's things like the uniformity of causation or like the external world, which, I mean, I take to be true. I don't think I can like not believe them. But at the same time, when I ask myself if I believe them then sometimes I go like, I actually don't know if I believe this, but I seem to just gravitate back into like operating as if it exists. But I'm not, I'm not, it's just those just happen to not be perfect examples. Like I'm not trying to deny that there will be things like that if you poke around. I'm sure there are things that I can't justify. Um, with logic, that's a bit different because I'm actually kind of, this is something I'm currently a bit hung up on, uh, which is whether we should be conventionalists about logic. Um, I'm sure I'm triggering Marty, but you know, like, I don't really, I don't really know if law, if it makes sense to think of logic as being anything other than some kind of, like, convention that we operate according to. I don't know what it means to say, like, logic is, like, grounded or some shit like that. I'm not, I'm not even clear what that's saying. So those examples might not be the best examples, but I'm sure there are examples you could find of things that I believe, not things that I, like, fluctuate around believing or, or whatever. And that I can't justify. But again, none of it will get you to like Christianity is like somehow where you want to go. Does your use of any of these things kind of imply something about your belief, or do you think those things are distinct? I think that if I operate constantly like the external world exists, that means that I'm have that belief. It's just I think that it's possible to have beliefs that like 
It's kind of like the way you can like see, um, like if you look at like you know those illusion books where if you like look at the thing in the right way and like kind of cross your eyes a bit, like the three dimensional yeah. image pops. Up. I, like I kind of think there are beliefs that are like that, where it's like, it's like you're naturally gonna see it a certain way all the time unless you actually focus your attention on it, in which case then it might like disappear or change or something like that. So, I think that. I'm, and I'm not sure that the external world or uniformity of causation are beliefs that are like that, but I'm, I'm kind of open to something like that might go on with certain beliefs like that, because I, I operate as if they're true. So you can say I believe them most of the time, but I also think that I fluctuate into not believing them when I actually start specifically asking how I would justify them. And I start going, I don't know if I fucking believe that. Are you a contextualist or some type of, what, what is your epistemology? Um, I don't have a firm view on epistemology. It's not something I've spent a lot of time with. So do you think that there has to be something ultimate to ground all uh, facts and everything? No, but I also, again, <laughs> that doesn't mean that I think that that's false. I just, I don't think it's true, and I'm not clear exactly what it means. Because if I say, like, I don't know God exists, right? Yeah. Aren't I also saying that like like i don't need god in order to make intelligible facts oh dear god no you're you're so like this is i'm, I'm sorry no 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 i'm i'm not saying it to you i'm i'm saying it cuz i know that darth spreads this stuff and it's such garbage right it's like no you absolutely don't and like you people should i guess know how to push back on on darth and his little precept gang when they use this kind of stuff like so let me think of just how to phrase that precisely. You said it well, but then I said shit and it left my mind. So, yeah, the idea is if you're agnostic about God, then when you make statements, you're assuming that it's possible to make statements in the absence of God existing, right? Like that's that's the that's or that well, statements can be intelligible without God. It's like you assume that by making a statement while being agnostic, right? Because you're not convinced God exists and you're making a yeah. statement, so you think it's possible to make intelligible statements without God existing, yeah, right? Help down, Mr. Uh, Dutch idiot, can you mute yourself? You're popping off. Your mic's going off. I don't think you can hear. Um, sorry, Frank, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so that was the idea, right? That it's like, if, you, um, if you're if you agnostic, but then you make some claim, so you're not convinced God exists. So since you're making claims, though, it seems like you're convinced that you can make claims in the absence of God existing, right? Yeah, I never understood that either, because, yeah, I can, and I can understand... And I can reason as well. Well, so. the, the, the point is just that you should be agnostic about that claim too, right? This is the move if you want to get out of that, okay? So the move to get out of that is, well, no, I'm agnostic about if I can make claims that are intelligible in the absence of God, right? You can just, you can just say, maybe, like, so if you're agnostic and you're making a claim, right, it's like, Maybe it's the case that the claim isn't intelligible. Maybe it's the case that the claim is intelligible and it's actually in virtue of God that it's intelligible, but you just don't know God exists. Or maybe it's the case that it's not in virtue of God. And it's you just don't know, right? You're not sure what claims are intelligible in virtue of, right? So it's not entailed by you being agnostic and making a claim that you think that claims can be intelligible in the absence of God, right? You don't, you don't know that. You're, you're agnostic about that too. Maybe they can't be. Do you appreciate that, Franks? You know, Dutch idiot, you yeah. gotta mute yourself. Your keyboard's no, fucking killing me. I appreciate it, Isaac. I totally agree with you, man. I just, it's Darth, bro. I, I try to talk to him, and he always like wraps me up in this little circle, you know. Yeah, the only the only way is like you just have to understand like Darth is just a really pushy like kind of like mid tier debater. Like anyone, who, I gotta mute Dutch idiot. He's just he's killing me. I probably probably fucking blocked him because he's popping off like that. Um. So, yeah, I mean, you just have to understand, Darth is just, like, a really pushy, like, mid-level debater. Like, if you, the way to get around Darth is just go read, like, an average amount of philosophy, and you'll just pwn Darth, right? Like, he just, Darth's whole thing is just preying on white belts, right? He just preys on people who don't know how to react to what he's saying, and there's nothing that makes ha Darth happier than when he, like, grills you, and then you don't know how to react, and he, like 
gets you to say something like, yeah, I think it's possible to, like, make intelligible statements in the absence of God, because you just don't, like, realize wh what you're saying. It's like, there's nothing that makes him happier than that. Or, like, yeah, like, I guess, since I don't believe that God exists, I believe God doesn't exist. Like, he loves if someone just doesn't notice the problem with that, right? So, yeah, I mean, Darth, he he's not a good debater, but he is better than most people, right? Because most people don't debate. So, of course, anyone who fucking spends all day debating is going to be better than most people at debating. He gets pwned by a range of people, right? And if you want to know the people who can tell you how to pwn Darth, like, I mean, I, I can obviously do it, but there's people who, like, know the ins and outs of Darth's fucking worldview, like, hilariously. Like, talk to Jack Angstrike or talk to... Detroyer, you know, talk to Venus, talk to Realistic Nihilist, talk to Dr. Z, talk to Bryn, talk to Ob, like, there's a whole range of these people who can just tell you how to absolutely eviscerate Darth, right? So, basically, he preys on white belts, and people who know how to debunk him, once he, like, firmly knows that, A, you're in that category, and B, you're, like, pushy enough that you're not gonna let him steamroll you, he'll do what he does to me. He'll just never talk to me, right? Because he knows that he wouldn't survive the conversation. So, if you want to not get pwned by Darth, I would recommend talking to those people about his arguments, but also just read philosophy. If you put in fucking 20 minutes a day reading SEP articles, within a year you'll know more philosophy than Darth. A hundred percent. So that's all I can say to you. If you don't put in the time, though, he'll continue to uh, to, to beat you with his little stupid tricks. Hey, I appreciate it, Isaac, and uh, I'm a big fan, by the way, so I appreciate it, bro. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. It's always weird when someone says fan, but I'm glad you like what I do. Does anyone else have any, any final shit before I leave here? I mean, I've, I've had enough of the agnostic stuff for now, but you know, anyone? Oh. Yeah, what up, Actually, Corsi? You called uh, Darth uh, battling white white belts. I joke once in a while and call him an intellectual child molester. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, to be fair to him, like, there are people who he'll take on who aren't white belts, right? Like, he used to talk to Malpass, but it's always a fine line right like i for a long time i thought alex was like some kind of fucking darth whisperer because he could always just like somehow manage to get darth to put up with him even though he was giving like intellectually rigorous pushback which normally like intellectually rigorous pushback just results in darth fucking like muting you or yelling at you or something um but even even alex eventually managed to enrage darth and now they don't talk right so it's like he technically he'll talk to people who aren't white belts but what he won't do is talk to them once he knows he won't talk to someone once these two features are in play okay and i challenge you to find a counter example someone who a is relatively good with philosophy they don't need to be fucking really good if they're like at or like a little below where i'm at like they're like maybe like intermediate they know some like basic shit about the general areas right but, like someone like that so that condition has to be in play they have like some like kind of hey google be quiet they have some kind of like general knowledge about philosophy it doesn't have to be like expert level or anything so that condition and then the other is they are pushy enough that they won't let him totally steamroll them 100 percent. once those two conditions are met he's gone right if either is not met he might still debate you like he'll talk to people who are smart with philosophy if they're not pushy enough like he would talk to malpass for a long time till malpass one day like kind of didn't put up with the bullshit um or if you're pushy but you don't know anything about philosophy he'll he'll like you know he'll probably mute you eventually but he'll like sit there and like debate you and like make you look stupid or whatever but if you have both of those things i challenge any of you to find a counter example someone who knows a relatively okay amount about philosophy and who is pushy enough that they won't let Darth steamroll them, who Darth will talk to. You won't find an example. Uh, anything else, or I, I might dip out if that's it. All good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good one, guys. Yeah. No oh, Actually, what? Actually, I, I had a question before you, before you go. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were saying, yeah, go, go. You can go, but okay, I guess not. Yeah, what's up? No, no. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What, what is it? It's fine. Sure. I was actually asking you, so would you accept the proof that some sort of um, higher force exists? So, for example, if I could argue to you that materialism is not true, would you then be okay with saying, okay, so now we've 
got rid of all these other options. Let's focus on these other options and kind of go down that tree that way. If you're asking me if I would accept a higher power if you convinced me that materialism is false, then no, because it's not entailed by materialism being false that there's a higher power. Uh, could you explain that maybe a little bit more? Yeah, like, what? why would it be a contradiction for someone to be a non-materialist and not believe in a higher power? No, to be a materialist and to believe in a higher power, I would say it's contradictory, right? Um, wait, but that's not what I said. You, I thought the question was, if you convinced me that there, that materialism is false, would I believe in a higher power? Did I mishear you, or was that the question? No, that's the question, correct. Right, so what I'm saying is no, because it doesn't follow from materialism being false that there's a higher power, right? It's possible to be a non-materialist and also a uh, agnostic. Well, it's possible... So it wouldn't be sufficient. How so? But there's no contradiction. How so? Because if you believe in materialism isn't the definition or working definition of materialism, that there's only the material world. And so the higher power would obviously have to be outside of the material world. Or am I missing something? If you grant that there is something outside of the material world, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be like a mind or something like that. Okay, yeah, so it doesn't have to be a mind, but, but a higher power is not necessarily a mind, it's more of... Right, okay. Well, well so wait, you, but, but if you... you so, wait, there's, there's one or two things here. So, if higher power means what people normally mean by it, which is, like, a god, like, at least somewhat closely construed to the classical construal, then absolutely I would not believe that just because you falsify materialism. I would just be a uh, non-materialist atheist. Um, and for the record, I'm not actually a materialist. I don't have a view on whether, you know, physicalism is true or false. But um, if, if, on the other hand, you're going to say, oh, well, you know, a higher power doesn't have to be a mind. Maybe it's some, like, inanimate process. It's like, okay, well, wait. But now, now you're just, like, basically equivocating on what higher power means. Like, that doesn't mean what... what, well, what well, I'm, I'm just going more just, along the lines of, okay, so... Because a higher power, as far as I, I think about it, it could mean something like, you know, the eternal Brahmin, in terms of Hinduism. It could refer That's to a something mind. like... Is, is it a mind? Because I think it's more... <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think Brahmin has a mind in Hinduism? You don't think that these are, like, gods that have, like... I, I mean, I'm under the impression that these are, these are like, beings no, that have... No, Krishna is a god, right? Krishna is a god, we can accept that fine. Okay, now I don't know about fine. Hinduism, but is Brahman is Brahman described in Hinduism as like just a, like some like process or something? Right. It's kind of like it's kind of the closest thing I would say to it would be like the force in Star Wars. The force. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be convinced that something analogous to the force exists if you showed me that materialism was false. Can I can I just try to help you with a visual diagram? Okay, just. I, I hope this might be a lot to keep in your mind. I hate when people describe things to me because even simple things are hard to keep in your mind without like paper in front of you. But like, just like picture like <laughs> a big circle, okay? Of like, this is like all the views that are like materialist and that are non-materialist, okay? Now say that you like take a chunk out of that circle by going like, okay, the materialist views are false. So now you're left with like a half moon or something. Like you've taken a big bite out of the circle not everything in the half moon affirms a higher power, right? And if you wanted to say it does, then you'd have to be able to say that there is some contradiction if we say that one is an atheist and, or sorry, that one is a non-materialist atheist. You have to be able to derive a contradiction from that. And if you can't, then we'd just say it's possible to be a non-materialist atheist. And if it's possible, then I wouldn't become a theist or believe in a higher power or whatever, just in virtue of materialism being falsified. Okay, I, I, uh, I'll have to read more about that. I'll come back. Well, I, I don't mind taking a minute to go, go through it, but just, like, can't, can't you understand what I mean? Like, there's people who think, like, like dude, there's people who think that there's non-material things, but they're just, like, numbers and stuff. Like, people think there's, like, platonic objects, and those, those are things like propositions or, like, you know, numbers or shit like this. They don't think that there's right, anything, but a, but like... but a platonic concept is kind of like a god right a platonic concept is a higher but this power. is what i mean by this is what i mean by equivocating so like if you just if if higher power just means something non-physical then of course if you falsify physicalism then i'm left believing in a higher power right but if higher power means anything like 
you know, God as classically construed, then it's going to be really easy to say you could be a non-physicalist and not believe in that kind of thing, right? Maybe you think that there's non-physical things, but it's only just like propositions or numbers or, you know, shit, some abstract objects or shit like that. There's not like, there's not like anything like with a mind in there or something like that. Well, but if, but if these abstract concepts do exist, right? So say we grant the platonic concepts and say we say that, you know, there's a platonic form out there somewhere of the concept of seven, then that begs the question, right? Where does that form come from? So wouldn't, wouldn't that be kind of a little bit of a difficult position to hold? But it doesn't, one second, but I don't understand why we're now asking if it's a difficult position to hold, and that's a different question than sure, is there I actually... Think. Yeah, but do you think that there's actually a contradiction entailed by being a non-materialist agnostic? A non-materialist agnostic? Well, I think the agnostic position really is, is kind of so broad, and I don't really know. You, you can hold a billion different positions and, and call yourself it's, agnostic. It's, it's, so really not, it's really not broad. It's, it's as I'm defining it. I, all I'm saying is you don't have a belief that God exists. You don't have a belief that God doesn't exist. right? So if you're a non-materialist, can be an agnostic if you're if you're both do you think there's a contradiction there i mean you're, you're asking maybe an honest question i think it's very difficult to hold that position but i'm not asking i'm not asking that i'm asking if you think there's a contradiction there not one that i can think off the top of my head right so yeah, then is. then we understand that just by falsifying physicalism we haven't actually pushed someone into a position of needing to accept um, a higher power, right? They might just be a non-physicalist atheist. There's a lot of people like this. There's a lot of people who believe in, you know, a bunch of platonic shit and uh, aren't theists, right? So it's not an yeah, uncommon well, position. Yeah. Well, deism is, is a belief in a higher power, though, right? So did you say te theism? Yeah, but who, who aren't who aren't deists or theists? I can add that in too, right? They're agnostics. Or atheists, even. There's there's atheists who are non-materialists. Do, do, do you think you'd give me some names? But I'm actually curious to hear uh, who you would be reciting for that. A, a well-known one on Discord would be Jack Angstreich. Um, I think Marty in this call is, I mean, unless Marty's a fucking Christian, I don't know about it. He's, a, he's definitely not a physicalist, and I'm pretty sure he's an atheist, so there's one. Um, yeah, I mean, like you can find people like this. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go back to the drawing board. JHC, no, JH, what the fuck are you talking about? J, I assume that's a joke. JHC is like hardcore physicalist. <laughs> um, okay, uh, any anyone else, or is that uh, is that all? Just gotta get that refresher of the Hempel's dilemma, man. Get rid of that materialism. But you're Mart, uh, yeah. So I, I actually, there's something I find kind of persuasive about that, but I'm just not. Whatever, we won't get into it. You're you are uh, an atheist though, right, Marty? Um, sorry, an agnostic, depends. agnostic. No, I wouldn't say so. I'm not a like a classic theist. I don't believe in like a Abrahamic God or a personal God, but I'm sympathetic to pantheism. Hmm, okay, well maybe Marty's not a good example, but yeah, you can you can find people like that. Okay, all right, I'm gone. Uh, good talking, to you guys. Have a good day.